And my friends okay. say, oh, Shirley, that's your money y'all spending now. <laughs> <laughs> the collection, or parts of it, had been displayed from Epcot to Hong Kong and seen by millions. Three things. I hope they walk away being inspired, motivated, and a little bit more educated. I hope they have something inside one of those, I think it was Oprah who used to call them aha moments. Like, oh, this is why that happened. This is why this is going on. This is what we can do about it. Walk through the collection, and you can almost hear the words of poet Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Coming to the Kinsey Collection, your brain is going to be doing like this. No question, you will get schooled by what you see here, but in a good way. Since this piece aired, the collection has made its way to L.A.'s SoFi Stadium, home of the Los Angeles Rams and Chargers football teams. Speaking of football, our next story takes us to Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's where I met retired NFL lineman Jared Veldhier, who now wears a different sort of uniform as the kitchen director of his kids' elementary school. Jared has taken the kids' lunches up a notch and created quite the stir in the school kitchen. Jared Veld here is a lucky dad. He gets to take his kids to school every day. And when they head off to class, Morning. he heads down the hall to his new job as the kitchen director at St. Paul the Apostle School in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Veld here is retired from his former line of employment as a six foot eight, 330 pound offensive tackle in the National Football League, where he played for 11 years. And yes, he says, there are similarities between protecting a quarterback and prepping and ordering and serving lunch for 300 kids every day. I mean, it seems, seems a lot more mundane, but trust me, if one of those things falls out of step, then your whole operation is, is in jeopardy. Then, then the quarterback gets sacked. Exactly. <laughs> and while the kids are neither the size nor the temperament of his former opponents, the youngsters do not hold back. In terms of feedback that you get from the kids, have they been rough on you, or are they uh, are they pretty fair? They're very they're very honest. I'll say that, uh, and it's helpful because they're happy to tell you if they like it. They're also happy to tell you if no, that's disgusting. Yet when he started in the kitchen last fall, there was more than a little curiosity from kids and parents alike. On the menu, for instance. So some flank steak that's going to end up as chimichurri flank steak. Chimichurri, tiki masala, beef bulgogi. Veld here, in the immortal words of Chef Emeril, has taken school lunch up a notch. It looks like a restaurant menu. Michelle Morrow is the school principal. Then we started getting more volunteers in the lunchroom because our volunteers get to eat. And yeah, we, we constantly get the, are you going to offer takeout? There's so much around cultures globally centered around food, getting together, having a meal, having conversation. To me, it's not only like nourishing to my body, but to my soul. And as a pre-med student in college, then a pro athlete, he learned a lot about nutrition. I realized there's foods that I need to incorporate more to have my body feel good from week to week when you know, you're basically getting in the car wreck each Sunday. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you, you have to be really smart and calculated about it and teach yourself to like new things and think outside of the box. All of which he tries to bring to the school kitchen. Tuesday is Taco Tuesday at St. Paul's. The Nonas are there to cheerfully volunteer, and we did indeed sample everything from scratch. The crema, ridiculous. Get out of here. Oh my God. Do you feel like the food has gotten an upgrade since you have an NFL player in the kitchen? Oh yeah. Some of the school parents were curious or even doubtful the big guy in the kitchen could deliver. They are doubtful no more. Veld here spent most of his life working toward one goal, and like many a former pro athlete, wondered what he would do when his playing days were done. You know, how do you optimize your life? You know, get get the most out of the you know the, the blessing that we've been given on this earth, and just taking that curiosity for that purpose, I think, has kind of led me down some different roads in life. To the kitchen. Yeah, to the kitchen. Next, we turn to another group feeding their community. Carversville Farms, outside Philadelphia, is on a mission to give away everything they grow on their 300-acre farm. 
They work with Cathedral Kitchen near Camden, New Jersey, which can be described as a family restaurant for folks who really need a meal. And the food, it's about as good as it gets. Even in the fall, Carversville Farm is as green as spring, a response worth thinking to the care and goodwill of the folks who work here. They're excited to come out now. Listen to that. That's some happy chickens. Yeah, I think so. Guard dogs Thor and Natasha make sure no wily coyotes invade this haven that livestock manager Craig Haney says produces more than a thousand eggs a day. These are real live super duper organic eggs. Yeah, they're certified organic and pasture raised. I would say high welfare. Good living. Carversville Farm is organic, regenerative, which means season by season, the soil actually gets richer. It shows. Carversville Farm fulfills the lifetime dream of a son of South Philadelphia. He grew up in South Philly in a row house, mm -hmm. and for him the farm was heaven. For years and years and years he talked about it. Amy and Tony DeRazio built and run a still-growing technology company. They've done quite well. He said, you know, I think I might want to start a farm and give everything away. And I thought, well, the ride's been pretty fun so far. <laughs> May as well give it a try. They've done well and decided to do something good, really good. The food is as good as any, any food that goes to a Michelin three-star restaurant. And our dream is to provide the level of respect that you would expect for the food to be delivered to you in a restaurant. And in case you missed it, the abundance of their 300-acre farm, they give away, give away. Every afternoon, there's a line outside Cathedral Kitchen in nearby Camden, New Jersey. What these folks come for often rivals the best takeout anywhere. Chef Matt Jensen. I have green salad with watermelon radishes from Carversville Farm. The potatoes are from Carversville Farm. Yeah. And then, of course, our chickens, our chicken breasts and our chicken thighs from Carversville. How good is this as produce? Uh, the quality is fantastic. Discerning clients like Dion Sanders echo that praise. How good is the food here? On a scale from one to ten, a nine and a half. Nine and a half. That's pretty good. Look at it. It feeds the homeless. Pre-COVID, Cathedral Kitchen served meals inside, more like a family restaurant than a soup kitchen. They also run a kitchen academy that trains workers for careers in the restaurant industry. Chef Naima Rutling is an instructor. Like I tell my students, like if you're not doing nothing with love or doing it from your heart, then people will feel this. So I'm trying to talk to people through my food or, you know, even if it's just saying hi, well, how is your day today? Nothing is too good for the hungry people who arrive at Cathedral Kitchen's door, says Executive Director Carrie Kitchen Santiago. I went into this work because I want to try to help people that don't have the same opportunity that a lot of the rest of us do. There, but for the grace of God, the Durazio's commitment to serve, like the farm, keeps growing. We can't possibly do as much as we want to do, but we'll keep going. Thank you to Amy and Tony for showing us their amazing farm and the work they do. Coming up after the break, I'll introduce you to a woman who's paying it forward after a life-changing surgery. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs>
Pop Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Welcome back to Today All Day. I'm Harry Smith. Our next story is about a young woman named Megan Westman, who at just over a year old became one of the youngest people in the United States to receive a cochlear implant. Well, she shares her journey of paying it forward to other hearing impaired adults and children. Take a look. At the Stony Brook Audiology Research Center, Megan Westman adjusts the tuning of Andrea Orlando's new cochlear implant. Before the implant, Orlando could no longer hear the voices of his wife or his grandchildren. His hearing had all but vanished. But now... How's it going? It's going great. A lot different. I'm hearing sounds again for the first time. I can hear 100% better and only more to improve. Starting to hear music again. Really? What are you going to listen to on the way home? Uh, I listen to, I like classic rock. <laughs> 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 Most patients don't want the stimulation too soon. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. The nerve can be really sensitive. For him, he was at the go, just ready to have that volume. So it was really exciting for all of us to see that success. Megan Westman gets it big time, for without her cochlear implant, she would not be able to hear at all. So when you're there and you're working with someone who has just got an implant and you tell them or they notice that you have an implant too, what does it mean to them? They light up and they're, they almost, it's like finding our own people. When you find somebody else who has the same story or similar story, you kind of feel like you've already made a connection with a total stranger. Meningitis put Megan in intensive care when she was not yet two years old. That's when they ordered the auditory brainstem response testing and I had no response. I was profoundly deaf in both ears. She became one of the youngest cochlear implant recipients in the country. And while it helped her hear, it brought unwanted attention to her disability. Spent my, most of my life trying to hide it, pretend like it wasn't there, cover it up with my hair. Junior high was torturous. Were you bullied? I would say more indirectly. I don't think kids were mean as to say straight to my face, but there was also a social delay that comes with anybody with a disability with a hearing loss especially you're not picking up on conversations that are happening around you what was it like then growing up with this it's shaped me into who i am today it's made me stronger and i wouldn't change anything and especially now feeling like i've found my purpose and what i'm going to do for my career it it was all worth it hi christopher hi christopher we have all marveled at the videos of children who are implant recipients. Megan wants to be a symbol of assurance, especially for parents of those kids. I can see how much it means to them to see someone who has had a success story with an implant. And it kind of gives them a little hope that their children can have the same outcomes. In the final days of her training, Megan has been under the watchful eyes of audiologist Dr. Jamie Cluna. She truly will understand what, what they are going through. Uh, we can read it in books and we can talk to our patients and hear about it, but to actually live it is a whole different story. It is amazing, after all. To be an audiologist requires very good hearing. Megan's got that and more. Hearing loss, cochlear implants, disabilities in general, nothing can hold you back. You can achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it. You stay committed, dedicated, you work hard, nothing can hold you back. Megan is now Dr. Megan Westman, and she's working at an ENT practice in North Carolina. When we come back, you don't need much, just a ball and a mitt for a good game of catch. What if that simple game became much more than that? More on that story after the break. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. 
what are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Today All Day. I'm Harry Smith. Dan Bryan's son, Ethan, was just 16 years old when he was killed in a car crash. His father wanted to honor his son in a simple and special way. On a windswept day in southeast Missouri, this reporter and a man from here play catch. Both are aware that for grown-ups, this simple activity brings back memories. For Dan Bryan, they are of his son, Ethan. How would you describe his relationship with baseball? Oh, it, it was definitely his love. He wanted to be the best that he could be. He wanted to play on the field at whatever cost. So if it meant learning every position, that's what he was gonna do. Ethan was killed in a car crash when he was 16 years old, a high school sophomore already on the varsity baseball team. What did that do to you? I was, uh, I was in a really dark place for, for quite a while. I knew I was facing depression. It was a very hard time. Dan had regrets. Days of would haves, should haves. I think a, a lot of times we just, we spend too much time kind of putting it on uh, autopilot in life. Mm. But I really wish I would have soaked in a little more um, every day. Lost in the vacuum of grief, months went by. One day, Dan's eyes landed on a book someone slipped to him after Ethan's memorial service. The title, A Year of Playing Catch. The author, with the same name as Ethan, used catch as a spiritual odyssey. Dan was inspired. When you first set out to find somebody to play catch with mm -hmm. that first time, mm -hmm. what was the response? Absolutely because... And who was it? My first catch was with Tyson Price. Um, he was he was the uh, boy that was in the car with Ethan. He had survived the accident. And uh, Ethan and Tyson were best friends. I wonder if he needed that catch almost as much as you did. He did. Yeah. He did. Um, and he's, he's asked me uh, to catch any time. Tyson remembers it well. I think to both of us, it was something that was more of like a healing process, and uh, it's turned into something that's huge. Huge, and it's healed. I think it's helped so many other people. Best friend Tyson and Caden Merrill were Ethan's teammates on the baseball team and fishing buddies. Somehow, if you're having a bad day, he'd always pick you up, and just a good guy. He was the true definition of a friend. Gone now nearly two years, Ethan's presence is still very much felt. There hasn't been a single game that ever since that I haven't gone into thinking to myself that I'm playing this game not only for myself, for my team, but I'm also playing it for Ethan. I just know that he's with me no matter what I'm doing. And by Ethan's coach. The way Dan's handled it, there's no doubt in my mind that it's helped our community heal, it's helped his classmates heal, his teammates heal. 
by inspiring those on the other end of Dan's catches to open up about their woes, after a few throws, many a burden is laid bare. After more than 150 catches now, does it surprise you there are so many people walking around with pain in their lives? It doesn't surprise me because it's, uh, it's unspoken pain. In his own pain, Dan has found purpose. I feel like I have a job to do. I need to shoulder your pain. I need to help lift that burden. And I'm doing better. As a result of it. Ever, as a result, and I can, I can help others. Dan is still playing catch, and he's had over 400 catches now. After the break, I have a powerful story you won't want to miss. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Today All Day. According to the Justice Department's National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, about 600,000 Americans go missing every year. Most of them are found quickly and unharmed. But there remains tens of thousands of cold cases, including a disproportionate number of members of one American community. I went to Montana to learn more. Jen Buckley carefully applies red paint to her hand. The paint is symbolic. It speaks of violence, of silence, and resilience. It's art intended to have an impact, to awaken a state and a continent to a tragedy of missing and murdered indigenous women. I think collectively it just doesn't seem like our indigenous lives are as important as some others. When people go missing, they're not looked for the same way. Missoula, Montana County Attorney Kirsten Pabst. It's an epidemic. When you look at the numbers, 25 to 30 percent of our missing persons are Native. When are they only make up about six to seven percent of our population. There are issues of jurisdiction. Whose problem? Tribal or municipal? And state, local, or even federal law enforcement? What do you think the roots of it are? I think you have to go back hundreds of years to colonization and cultural degradation of our Native American cultures. We're to the point now where we have to do something different. For an epidemic mostly unnoticed and rarely publicized, that something different fell to Buckley, who is an enrolled member of the Chippewa Cree tribes out of Rocky Boy, Montana. I just came up with a, well, maybe I'll just see if anybody wants to get their picture taken with the red handprint on their face to raise awareness. So that's how it started. And then I just started to think, like, what is a large scale thing that people see that they have to see? And it, it, I just like, well, I don't know, there's billboards. Lamar Billboards donates the space, but Buckley and her project are on a shoestring budget. I can raise the $200, it's up for a month, and then it comes down because I gotta wait till I have the, the next $200 to put it back up. It's needed because too often, attention goes elsewhere. Just look at that white female that went missing. Gabby Petito, missing for weeks. And how many Native American females went missing in that same time period and there was nothing, so. Not a blip. Veteran Missoula Police Detective Guy Baker. 
those billboards are a great way to bring awareness to this very important issue. Important to Detective Baker because maybe a billboard will help him solve a case he's worked for four years, the missing Jermaine Charlo. Jermaine is the niece of Valenda Morijo, so close she feels like a sister. Yeah. During our visit, Valenda volunteered to be photographed by Jen Buckley. The work Jennifer is doing is important. I'm hoping that her work reaches outside of Montana, that we can get billboards in New York, all the way down to Texas and up into Canada. This, this is crisis and it needs to stop. How is it for you to know your sister has been gone these years now? It's, it's been extremely hard. Maybe this could make a difference. It will. It will. I know it will. Those billboards give voice to the voiceless. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor and privilege to get to tell these stories for NBC News, and we thank everyone that has allowed us to tell theirs. For more, be sure to stay tuned to Today All Day. everybody, we've got a very special Pop Star Plus for you today. It is all about the Golden Globes. We're going to hear from some of the nominees ahead of the star-studded ceremony from Black Panther to the White Lotus. We've got you covered. Everything you need to know. First up, The Fablemans, the drama inspired by director Steven Spielberg's Real Life. And it's nominated five times, including Best Picture and Best Director nods. Our own Harry Smith had a chance to catch up with Spielberg and the cast. Movies are dreams. The Fablemans is neither fable nor fiction, but the story of a young Steven Spielberg pulled between parents who are polar opposites. What kind of movie are we going to make? I'm a very private person. I would never ordinarily take anything like this public. But after my mom passed, um, and I really got to thinking about the sum total of our relationship, which was a great relationship, but it was also challenging. His father, practical. That's more important than your hobby. Dad, can you stop calling it a hobby? Yeah, he, he, Dad was greatest generation. He wanted for me to have a bedrock life, and he felt that being a movie director was a pipe dream. It was going to be like quicksand. We're going to use Daddy's camera to film it. His mother, an artist. Whereas my mom said, go for it. <laughs> Just go for it, Steve. Let's not tell your father. Be our secret movie, just yours and mine. Michelle Williams plays Spielberg's mother okay. in a performance that is probably perfect. It was so powerful, and oh. you are this person who actually lives the life she wants to live yeah. to yes. a great degree yeah, in the movie. Thank you. That's the most beautiful thing I could possibly hear. It's really how we all, if we're brave enough, want to live. The heart, though, is not a compass. Where it leads is often not ideal or perfect. I knew things that nobody else in my family knew about my mom and about my dad's best friend. <laughs> Seth Rogen plays the friend. You think whatever bad things you want about me, kiddo, but you stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. Into all of which appears a man almost apparition-like, a great uncle played by Judd Hirsch. You see, what she got in her heart is what you got, what I got, art. Like me, like you, I think. We're junkies, and art is our drug. Gabriel LaBelle nails the teenage filmmaker. And as for working with Spielberg? It's thrilling, it's intimidating, it's uh, nerve-wracking, and you know that it's going to be incredibly significant. Paul Dano adds the father role to an already impressive resume. I want you to make a camping trip. And I thought that the father was such a quietly complicated character because he had to keep so much of his own experience to himself, I think, for his family's behalf, but also because maybe he didn't quite know how. Right. To there was so much yearning it. in him yes. to connect with his son. I don't know what to do anymore. What was it like to be filming in the memories of your own childhood? It was hard because the more I shot in the house, the more I remembered how much I loved living there. I loved Arizona, I loved living in the desert. I loved having my family around me. And so I mourned the loss of my childhood as I was recreating aspects of my childhood. Wow. 
Williams immersed herself in Spielberg family memories. These beautiful family archives, the photos, the home movies, the tape recordings, her laugh, her sound, her clothes, her smell, her perfume. You know, one of the things I loved about working with Michelle is after a take, and she could tell I was really happy with the take, she didn't accept happiness as a reason to stop here. And she'd always walk over to me and she'd get very close to me and she'd just sort of take my wrist in her hand. She said, anything else? Anything, anything else? Anything, anything else. You know that thing they say about an actor embodying a character? That's Williams in The Fablemans. I cried so hard that they thought something was wrong with me on the night that we wrapped. And I just, it was very hard to say goodbye. Arizona will never leave me. Right? Whoa. You crushed me. Whoa. You totally crushed me. You guys. Oh, my <laughs> Thank God. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. much. No pressure. Right there. No pressure. Taking on the great Steven Spielberg's entire family. They did a great job with that. And coming up, we're going to hear from an actress who's nominated this year, Michelle Yeoh. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Yeah. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. The film Everything Everywhere All at Once defies all genres and earned six nominations at this year's Golden Globes, among them Best Comedy and Best Actress for its star Michelle Yeoh, making her the first Malaysian Chinese actress to be honored in that particular category. She told our third hour why she was so thrilled when she read the part and what the role meant to her. Michelle Yeoh played a mother who fiercely loved her son, not so much his girlfriend, <laughs> crazy rich Asians. And last year she was the aunt taking her superhero nephew under her wing in Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Well now, Michelle takes center stage in everything, everywhere, all at once. She plays <laughs> Evelyn, a laundromat owner, who finds out there are multiple universes and then discovers some skills she didn't know she had. Just so you know, Michelle Yeoh does all of her own stunts <laughs> as well. So this is a movie everyone's buzzing about. Roker's been talking about it all morning. When you read the script initially, what was it about the script that, that sucked you in? Oh, wow, that was the first time in many years that I'd read a script that was written for an older, Asian, ordinary woman mm -hmm. and who turns into a superhero. Mm. Right, it was, yeah. I, I, my initial response was like, I have to meet the two Daniels who wrote, to see, to wrote it, to see if they were 
insane that you know, <laughs> they really had to be locked up in an asylum or I was in for the best ride of my career yeah. wow. because I felt that it was like everything finally I will get to showcase all the things all I would love my audience to see what mm -hmm. I'm capable of and in everything everywhere all at once exactly like the title I get to be in like five genres of movie yeah. mm -hmm. in one movie, All at once. in yeah. one big bagel that's the the, the everything bagel <laughs> it's, it's a, a important part of the movie but what's interesting is this is a movie that de defies genre uh, i mean it's it's a mm -hmm. love story it's a romance mm -hmm. it's an action movie mm -hmm. it's a sci-fi movie mm -hmm. it's a comedy mm -hmm. uh was that what's really appreciate you appreciated about this script for definitely for sure because it's like a, the woman is the most unlikely hero you know and what it also teaches is like failures actually make you hopefully a better person mm -hmm. and in all the despair this immigrant family comes over here for the American dream mm -hmm. and it, you know what kind of dream it can sometimes turns out to be mm -hmm. but what happens here is like even in all the despair and struggles and whatever they find joy and love mm -hmm. at the end of the day the familial connections yes. between the mother and daughter the core of the story the husband and wife and an ordinary woman that you pass by on the streets mm -hmm. every day somebody's mother or auntie or grandmother who is so unnoticed is given an opportunity to have an amazing voice mm -hmm. a great voice and at the end of the day we find out that Actually, we all have a superhero power wow. within us, which is kindness. And if we can exercise that superpower, be kind. Every, yeah. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Just be kind to yourself mm -hmm. and to each other. We will make such a heck of a difference. It is a superpower. It is a super and that we all have and mm -hmm. we can use. So reading it and then getting a chance to meet the crazy, my evil geniuses, the Daniels. Mm -hmm. um, well, they had the courage to write it. Mm -hmm. It's a multiverse, too, and you've got the hand. Oh, yes. A, yeah. one, you recognize it. Multiverse because... that everybody in the, that universe has hot dog fingers. Yes. <laughs> when you were downstairs in the dressing room this morning, and people didn't know what was happening, like, and a couple Michelle people Young? were like, guys, look at that lady's. That lady, you know, we were trying not to be rude in that spot. Just FYI, downstairs now, people downstairs who are watching are gonna go, Oh, oh yes, it all makes sense. Michelle's it okay, yeah. <laughs> it's not her real digit. But in this, I play, I, I play opposite Jamie Lee Curtis, who's the main antagonist mm -hmm. in my life, in Evelyn Wong's life, because she's being audited. And Jamie plays, she's this unrecognizable, deal, totally. yeah. We're all unrecognizable in, the, in the sense. And in this universe, we have hot dog fingers. There's even veins <laughs> on the hands. Look at oh. that on the front. Michelle, you'll thank yeah. you. And a big congrats to Michelle on that well-deserved nomination. Coming up, a Best Supporting Actress nominee, the legendary Angela Bassett. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs>
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're back in more of our special Golden Globes edition of Pop Star Plus today. The Best Supporting Actress category is absolutely stacked this year, including the one and only Angela Bassett for her performance in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Fun fact, she would make history as the first actor from a Marvel Cinematic Universe film to win a Golden Globe. Recently, Hoda and Jenna caught up with her. Okay, we have royalty in the house. We're so excited. In Black Panther, you know her as Queen Ramonda, but around here, she'll always be our queen, <laughs> Angela Bassett. Angela, Good morning. what a privilege it is for us to have you here today. And I'm so excited. I'm, it was like my face. Well, I feel like we, we <laughs> Do you just, see our faces? Yeah. We're like two kids. We were so happy because you were at a gala, the Wearable Arts Gala. Yes. We couldn't stop talking about you on our show. We're like, wait, wow. show the glow, show the shot. Yeah. I mean, this, when you're on the red carpet, like, I feel like you feel so at home. Is that what it feels like for you? It, it is. I mean, you, you you know, you get there, you know, it's like for a minute, for a little bit. But yeah, my uh, stylist came up with this beautiful, beautiful ensemble. A lot of it that she made with the gloves and the cape. And that was such a different thing altogether. And the color, the sparkle, the jewels. And uh, when you were a kid, did you love to like dress up or close your thing? Or was that something I you like came making to later? clothes for my little dolls? Oh, you do. Yes. I love that sewing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we were just saying um, when I got to meet you, you've been doing Doing this for a long time. Yeah. You've been acting, you've been in this world for a long time, but it feels like you're having a moment yeah. right now. It does. A really exciting, <laughs> really nice, really wondrous moment. And so yeah. what does that feel like? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's fabulous. Yeah. It, it really is. You know, especially, you know, just the long, as you say, long, been here a long time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But the longevity, yeah. the consistency, you know, to be able to, you know, practice your craft and to have it acknowledged and received yes. in such a beautiful way by, you know, wonderful people. Well, they I'm, say, I'm really grateful. They say things happen right on time. I wonder what it is about this time. I mean, I know you've worked your whole life, but I wonder what it is that is bringing you to this moment now. Like, everywhere I feel like I look, I see you. Yeah. You're somewhere. Glamour yeah. Women of the Year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um, I don't know, and I don't try to uh, dissect it yeah. too much. I just try to and stay in the moment and enjoy it. You know, this movie this, yeah. has, oh, wow. has already sort of <laughs> broken records. Yeah. The first one was a, a mm -hmm. groundbreaking mm -hmm. film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now to come back with mm -hmm. the loss of somebody that I know you loved, but mm -hmm. also, you know, there's a new story. Mm -hmm. what, what does it feel like? Do you, are y'all so looking forward to having it out there? We are. It's a beautiful story. It's epic. It's exhilarating. It's extraordinary. And when, and women at the, are at the front and center of the telling of this story. And all the love and respect that we had for Chadwick and for his legacy mm -hmm. and for his leadership in the first one, I think he he would have been proud, and we just you know wow. we're, we're just we're rooting for strengthen ourselves. Yeah. We're rooting so for a woman to be it. Black Panther. We, we think there is a woman is, Black but Panther. We are feeling we very feel confident. Confident. Yes. Are we yeah. right? Are we, <laughs> are we right? <laughs> well, when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's so many beautiful parts of your life. One of them is that you've been married for. 25 years. Mm -hmm. And there are so many beautiful parts of your story. You talked about how when you were growing up, a long relationship wasn't modeled. You were learning about that. What have you learned about a long relationship over these 25 years? Oh, my years? gosh. It takes some negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some negotiating back and forth. Sometimes you get what you want. Sometimes I get what we want. Hopefully, yeah. we get what we want yeah. most of the time together. And forgiveness is key. Because, yeah. you know, we're only human, and we're bound to make some sort of mistakes, unintentionally, yeah. of course. But to be able to ask for forgiveness and always be able to give it, yeah. to offer yeah. it, offer that grace. Yeah. I, I was reading that your husband, Courtney, who, of course, people know as an actor, yeah. too, said yeah. something to you. Oh, early on, like early the first on. week. Yeah, yeah. And what, what was it? <laughs> Divorce is not an option. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are you talking about that? It's only been a week. <laughs> You see something in me? No, no. <laughs> Did that change sort of the, the DNA of, of y'all, the DNA of your choices as a couple? You, you know, it, you got to have at least 
one person mm -hmm. who can stand strong even in the midst of the storm, yeah. I think, you know. And, yeah. and uh, he having, you know, had mother, father, and all of that, and seen some storms there, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so well, ahead. So many remarkable things about your career. One that shocked both of us was that after you played Tina Turner, which was oh. a remarkable, yes, obviously Oscar-worthy performance, nominated for an Oscar, um, you didn't get a phone call mm -hmm. for a gig, for a job, for more than a year. Yeah, about a year and a half. What, what Why? Is that? Oh, oh well, it. you know, it was just the time. Yeah. You know, that was long before streaming and all these other platforms where there were opportunities. You know, remember, we only had maybe like three and a half stations, ABC, yeah. CBS, NBC, and yeah. maybe something. But we had never seen a movie like this where a black woman was at the lead of this, wow. uh, you yeah. know, of the story. That was sort of new, new, new territory at that time. Were you upset that you didn't get any calls? Or were you wondering, like, what is it? Because there... You, you wonder, but... I, I, so I was so young, and that's, uh, you know, just being an artist and not the yeah. business part of show yeah. business, yeah. understanding what's going on there. But you just stay strong, and, you know, you heard stories from other actors, you know, in the theater who talked about how it you can become jaded, yeah. you know, and so it's always let's guard against guard that. Guard against that. Let's be mindful of that sort of like divorce is not an option. Don't yeah. become, yeah. you know, jaded by things that will happen or things that won't happen in your in your what, time. What is happening so now? now? The yeah. queen and a keep learning, keep striving, keep moving forward, keep stay positive. Oh, yes. Where where do you find joy now? Like where is the most magical parts of your well, life? <laughs> <laughs> the hell, this very moment. <laughs> it's joyful, you know, yeah. here with you, uh, all the wonderful things that are happening right now in my life and, and also my, my, two, my two little angels at home, you know, Slater and Bronwyn, who are, who are 16 and growing up to be really wonderful, compassionate, lovely young people. So wait, most proud of them. You, wait, you well, have twins? Is that right? I do. She's a I'm twin. a twin. Oh, are you? Yes. Put the bars on the window now. No, <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of keep hands. But that's, there's nothing. They, that's the most magical gift mm, as, a, yeah. as a twin. Mm, She's yeah. my best friend. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Always great to see Angela. She's clearly living her best life. Coming up, we couldn't let this episode pass by without a White Lotus recap. That's next. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Oh. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. People just cannot stop talking about the latest season of The White Lotus, and for good reason. After its big finale aired in December, now the drama uh, has scored a Best Limited Series Golden Globe nomination, as well as Best Supporting Nods for both Jennifer Coolidge and Aubrey Plaza. Her first ever nomination. In fact, Aubrey spoke to Hoda and Jenna about the show, along with co-star Adam DeMarco. HBO's The White Lotus was one of the buzziest new shows last year. Guess what? It won 10 Emmys, including Outstanding Limited Series. Okay, well, it's not limited anymore because we are so excited for the new season 
set in a Sicilian oh. resort with almost an entirely new cast, including Aubrey Plaza and Adam DeMarco. Here's a sneak peek. Welcome to the White Lotus in Sicily. We're on a family vacation right now, and it's just the three of us, because all the women in our family hate you. Please, can we just drop it? Now that he's loaded, you think he regrets marrying such a dud? What is going on with you? There's a reason they invited us here. It's like, you sold your company, you got rich, and now he's your best friend. Are these the kind of people we're going to be hanging out with now? Did you vote, babe? Be honest. I did. Didn't I? Doesn't matter. <gasps> Aubrey oh. Adam. We want to discuss White Lotus so badly right this minute, except for there's one other thing we have to discuss right this yeah, minute. Yeah, there's some what? hats. You're wearing hats. There's What's hats. What? What, what are you talking about? We're so excited about the new season of White We're Lotus. So excited about White Lotus. And, <laughs> yes. Wait. Season two is coming out it's this Sunday. Uh, spooky. <laughs> are y'all just? Did y'all just plan this? What was the story? Did no. you text each other last night? What happened? No. You're I dead. actually didn't know. I didn't realize we were doing the interview together, but I'm so happy to see. You. <laughs> yeah, so good to see you. So I have a question. Are you? Uh, <laughs> Wizard, or what's what's your situation? This season is so crazy. <laughs> it's like way more epic, sexier, darker. It's set in darker. Italy. It's set in so Italy. There's a volcano. Mm. Are there any witches? All <laughs> or wizards? <laughs> I don't know. I don't sounds, like that spooky stuff. Sounds too scary for me. <laughs> when you guys first met on the set, I know we're ignoring your hats, which is weird. Yeah. But were you all friends right away? You have the same sense of humor, obvious. So was that it? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Y'all weren't friends right away. No, 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 we were. I was friends with you. All oh, right, because me, me and Michael got dinner oh, yeah. like that first night. Dinner. Yeah, that yeah, was we fun. ran into each other on the course. So, um, I scared me at first. But then... I don't know why. <laughs> why she felt intimidating, or what was it? A little it? bit. Oh, how come? Really? Yeah. Tell us. I don't know. Um, because I left that thing in your room. Yeah. What was what it? What was it? Um. Aubrey left a witch, some witchcraft <laughs> symbols in my dressing room. Y'all are super... It was just like a welcome gift. I didn't know Can that. I, are you... Are y'all acting right now? What's happening? What, are you in the craft? We don't, don't know where I am. Do you remember the craft weekend. from the of 90s? Of course. I feel like you've got to be in, like, the craft remake or something. You're giving me I'll major do, I'll do whatever you guys vibes. want. I'll do whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about Jennifer Coolidge, please. Because I got to watch some of this yes. last night. First, I want to oh, really? ask you about what is going on, but I won't <laughs> spoil it for everybody. Jennifer Coolidge She's so good. She's a national treasure. She is a national we treasure. Did y'all try to protect her, her in, in, in Italy and make sure she was fine? She Well, you know, she had her own Italian bodyguards. And, yeah, she doesn't oh, need protection. Yeah, she, yeah she's, she's a queen. What's it you know? like working with her? Because we think she is She's the funniest. It. Yeah. She's the funniest. You never know what she's going to say. She always says something ridiculous and hilarious. She's so spontaneous. What did you she's see her best. in that you loved when she went? Did you see her in the Reese Witherspoon? What is that? Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Oh, Legally Blonde. Blonde. All the Best in show. Best, best, of her, yeah. best in show. Yes. Best in show. Bend and snap. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. Okay. So, is there pressure because yeah. the first one was so big, the first season? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that? I yeah. I mean, I don't know. This this season feels so different. Like Mike White was really good about writing a, just a totally different you know vibe. And yeah. So it doesn't. It feels different. But huh. but yeah. I mean, there's a lot of you know expectation. How did you get the call? Because this is such a hot show, and I know people are probably hoping maybe my phone will ring. How did it happen? I was taking out the trash. I was taking out my recycle. I was recycling. I was being a good person. <laughs> so good. maybe it was, yeah, and I was being a good Canadian. And, and then, then what happened? Um, my manager called me and was like, "You're going to Sicily." <gasps> and, I, See, it, and I put the trash in the trash and put the recycling in the recycling. So you know what? Day. There is something about not only getting to do White Lotus, yeah. but also getting to shoot in Sicily. For um, how yeah. you were there for how long? I was there for five months. <gasps> yeah, I was for four. Did you love every second? Yeah. yeah. Who dies? <laughs> <laughs> no. Good one. I thought yeah. maybe yeah. if they were wearing the hats, they Some would times. be, you know, confused. All right. So what did y'all do on your downtime? When you weren't acting, what was what kind of fun things did y'all do? Was there karaoke involved? Oh. Yeah, there was a, some karaoke What's nights. What's your karaoke song? Uh, Mr. Brightside. Oh. Did you do a song? By the Killers. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Oh, I usually like do. I usually wait till like the very end of the night, and then and then I do Enya just to like really <laughs> bring the room down, make everyone go home, and it's really awkward. So what else did y'all do during your do during your downtime? Five months, four months is a long time to hang. We ate. Yeah. We just ate dinners. So many dinners. Drinks. Went to the beach. Mm -hmm. Went to the beach. A couple times. Mm -hmm. Went hiking to the. Wait, was it cafe. really shot in like the Four Seasons or something? 
Yeah, we set, we lived in the hotel that mm -hmm. we were shooting in for like the first four months, um, and it's it's a Four Seasons in Taramina called the San Domenico, and it's actually an old restored like monastery convent. convent. So yeah. it's wow. like, very haunted. So witchy, and... witchy stuff was happening. Just a little bit. Way, <laughs> what are y'all gonna be for Halloween for real? Oh, I don't, um, I don't do you know celebrate? Yet. I, I'm like always an all year Halloween type. Yeah, person. I'm all year always round. kind of. Well, Halloween is like the the one yeah day out of the year that I I I, I am some kind of witch, but like the scariest version is of Halloween. a witch. And then I can like run down the street and scream at the top of my lungs and <laughs> just kind of normal. be my natural self. <laughs> and Adam, how about you? This year? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like a. Skellington or something. A Skellington? <laughs> yeah, something spooky. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, um, you guys, know. this show is so good. Try one more time. Tell me who dies in that, no. who dies in that ocean. You tell me who dies in that ocean. Oh, that was a good season of White Lotus. If you haven't seen it, lots to unpack there. Uh, that's going to do it for Popstar Plus. Golden Globes preview. Thanks so much for being here. We're going to uh, just wish everybody to big luck this year. If you're nominated, that's great. If you win, that's fantastic, too. You can catch the ceremony live coast to coast on NBC and streaming on Peacock. That'll be January 10th. We'll see you next time. Two fantastic meals you can whip up in no time. Chris Kimball is the founder of Milk Street. His new cookbook is called Milk Street. Cook what you have, make a meal out of almost anything. And everybody is telling me it's an awesome book to have in the house. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. I love these recipes. We all have kids. You have a lot of kids. And it's just, it's this simple stuff you can put on the table that everyone can enjoy. It is a lot like a gaggle of kids. <laughs> I have, a, gaggle. I have yes. a lot. So we're starting with, is this tomato soup? Yeah, this is like you have some leftover bread. You have some canned tomatoes. You start by heating some oil, uh, mm -hmm. carrot. Uh, this we can do. A I'm small like, onion. This is nothing hard. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not Jacques Pepin here today. Okay. A uh, little thyme, a little, a little salt, time. and just saute that for five to seven minutes. Okay. okay. Soft, easy. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then we add the can. This is what you always have in the pantry. Yep. A can of whole tomatoes you right, can use. Chanel. You can this use we all have. Crushed. <laughs> so far, so and good. And you can just crush them with your hands, throw them in here. Okay. And cook that for maybe 10 minutes or so until okay. it reduces mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, then the chicken stock. Um, okay. That paste in the jars, I really like. I think that's pretty good stuff. Oh, okay. But whatever you want. You could actually use water. Mm -hmm. You know, most people in the world actually don't use stock. They really? just use, well, who has the French yeah, stock? Yeah, you're right, you're right. But most places don't have you it. You don't so, have stock like okay. So yes. we get that up to temperature, and then okay. we throw in about five ounces of baby spinach. Nice, mm. so that wilts down. Baby arugula, or you could use kale and cook it a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's it. So it's stuff you mostly have try. around. Mm -hmm. Um, Where does the bread now, come in? Now, we did bread. We did four cups of bread. We put that in a hot oven for five to seven it? minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Did you drizzle olive oil on it? Yeah, or? a little olive oil, about okay. a tablespoon. Try and then it. this is something you can do in a skillet, by the way. Mm. Okay. If you have leftover bread. Oh, my gosh. Um, you can just throw that on it. And the bread soaks up all the mm. yummy. And then a little cheese. Oh, this is yummy. Oh, wow. Hearty. You know, I, a friend of mine lives mm. in Paris, and I said, mm. what do you make during the week? And he said, I mm. just cook what I have. Oh, so my gosh. That's how most people right. cook, right? And it was so simple. Oh, that bread is yeah. so, so yummy. That is so delicious. Okay, okay this now. next one, this is the pizza dia we've been talking about all morning. Okay. <laughs> it's like Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> pizza dia. Pizza dia. So all you okay. eat is a taco that's Check. about the same size, toasted in the pan with a little bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll take it out and... Once so we definitely have up. tortillas in the house. We have all of these things. Yeah. yeah, you can use, if you have a bigger pan, you can use sort of a, you know, burrito size. Okay. Uh, some cheddar cheese and mm -hmm. some mozzarella. Can't beat that. Go on. Yep. This is so fun. And then we have a little marinade of some plum tomatoes or okay. grape tomatoes with some uh, onions, mm. little red pepper flakes maybe, mm -hmm. put that on, and finish That's with really some good. olives. Really good. Dylan, this tastes like something. Yeah. You would do for the family. And just throw this in a really hot oven, 450 mm -hmm. oven, for maybe 10 minutes until uh, the cheese melts. Well, I'm even thinking, so this you is, know, I could throw this into lunch boxes for school and everything. So it's just good. like. Maybe you could teach your kids how to do this. this Except for the hot oven. I know, that's true. The only mm. thing you have to worry about is that skillet coming out and the handle's oh, hot. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. You know what I like about this? 
These are things that we have in the house. And you know, I have to be honest, sometimes I come home and I'm tapped. I just mm -hmm. can't think of anything else. And they're tired of having the same old thing, but I know they like some of the similar things. So this is something that's a home This run. is well, that, absolutely delicious. Well, that's why it's adults, so when they get home, have a cocktail and peanuts. <laughs> but uh, but so we all have kids, so that's not, that is not going to work out too they well. Have to eat. We actually have to feed them. This is really so. good, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so thanks, much guys. for these recipes. Head to today.com slash food. Healthy, easy recipes from Gabby Dawkin, creator of What's Gabby Cooking? Gabby, good morning. Thanks for uh, helping us launch this thing. You are so welcome. Do you like the darkness outside in L.A.? It's <laughs> very early. Oh, my gosh. It's an early one. Who doesn't want to wake up and, and, and make chili? What do, you, what, do, what do you got for us today? So we've been making all sorts of healthy recipes in January, and this is one of the most popular recipes on my website. It's a black bean sweet potato chili that even like a true meat lover would love. As you saw earlier, I just sauteed some onion and some mm. sweet potatoes mm. in like a large heavy bottom skillet. And I'm gonna season it with garlic, salt, paprika, cayenne, and a little cumin, and just kind of toast that up. And then everything just goes into here. So we have black beans, we have quinoa, we have fire roasted tomatoes, and it's just gonna sit on the stove and kind of simmer for mm. with a little bit of stock. Um, you could use quinoa, you could use farro, you could use barley, you could use rice, and literally it's just kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing, and I'm obsessed with it. Could you swap out the black really beans, Gabby, if you don't like black beans, could you use a different kind of bean? Mm -hmm. You could use chickpeas, you could use kidney beans, any uh, red beans, like whatever kind of beans you have, it's meat? amazing. Meat? Could you, you have to use yeah. meat? Ask use meat. Carson. Yeah, ground beef. One. So, <laughs> yes, if you wanted to saute some, like, chicken or ground oh. turkey or put mm -hmm. shredded mm -hmm. chicken in mm -hmm. before, or it is no, like perfect and then extra way to add some protein. And Gabby, with, with most chilies, they're better even later. Is this mm -hmm. a good make ahead? Mm -hmm. This is one of the, so yes, this this I actually made yesterday, yeah. and it's better today than it was last night when I made it. The flavors have time to develop, and I'm just gonna season it with, or garnish it with a little cheese, a little cilantro, some lime juice, and then if you wanna get a little fancy, like you see on that photo, I like to add a little crema, which is just kinda like a watered down sour cream to give it a little extra creaminess. Mm. And it's perfection. Looks oh. yummy. What's, what's our second, Thank you got another dish for us? Yeah, so let's talk about vegetables because I feel like so many people don't know how to make vegetables properly. Mm. And the key to vegetables, in my opinion, is roasting them. So yes. as you can see, mm. we've got a bunch of cauliflower. I haven't overcrowded the pan and it's super caramelized. So I just popped it into an oven, 425 degrees, let everything roast up until it's nice and golden. And then to make matters like even better, mm. I make a homemade tahini sauce. Oh, so this oh, is a little oh. tahini. I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic in there, mm -hmm. a little bit of le Meyer lemon. I mean, dip I'm in LA, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could dip your french fries in it. Some Jeez. salt and pepper, stir it all up. And this, you could put it on cauliflower, you could put it on broccoli, you could, I mean, I'm blanking on other vegetables right now because we're live, but <laughs> truly, oh, look at that, carrots, Bobby. you can put it on every vegetable Ooh. known to man, and it's a perfect way to make vegetables, you know, a little bit more delicious, especially for kids. Yeah, Gabby, speaking of vegetables and kids, you're self, admittedly, you ate like a seven-year-old until you were 17, right? <laughs> I have a nine-year-old, yeah. and, and ask, I'm asking this for every parent watching right now, because it's really concerning for Siri and I now that Etta literally only eats grilled cheeses and pasta, <laughs> and I wonder, like literally almost, and I'm wondering, like, when, is there anything we can do to help that along, or are we supposed to just let that happen? Let it happen, to be totally honest. And then I went to culinary school after college, and I seem to be okay. But I will say, when you make vegetables like this and you get that caramelized flavor and you tell your kids it tastes like candy, like when I was a private chef, I used to tell the kids that, and they would clear the table. Mm. So I feel like, and getting them involved in the kitchen is really nice. My daughter's one. She can't cook yet, but I can't wait till I can make her chop things. <laughs> well, you're living proof that there's hope for us yeah. all, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. I've I actually so. wondered that, you know, when your kids eat no vegetables, like what happens? They but turn into world renowned chefs exactly. like Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It makes me there's, feel a lot better. There's, yes. there's hope out there. There is hope. Thank Last you. Last time. I also never had seafood before I was 24. So wow. my wow. school teacher See? thought I was. There is hope. You're right. Fine. That's right. It's going to be just Eating fine. Nutella every morning for 20 years is fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. Gabby, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other.
I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. The queen of Italian cuisine. She's also a best-selling author, award-winning chef, wonderful person. She makes cooking look easy, which I appreciate very much. And she's got a new book out. What number book is this, Lydia? Number 11. Number 11. Lydia's a pot, a pan, a bowl, simple recipes for perfect <laughs> meals. It is so great to have you here. It's been a tough... We're, we've missed you during the pandemic, doing the I food. I missed you. I missed you guys. It's been a couple of uh, tough years for a lot of people, especially for your family the last year. I know you lost yeah. your mother. How's everybody holding up? We're okay. We're okay. Yeah. You know, between the restaurants, the COVID, my mother. But life goes on, and we need to do some cooking. Cooking sort yeah. of heals you. It does. Uh, yeah, doesn't a, it? A lot a of love family. in these dishes. Especially this, this uh, dish is... is Onion soup. Mm -hmm. Simple, straightforward. Lots oh. of onions. Okay. Cut them thick. What kind? Just white onions? Any kind of onions? W white onions. White nice onions. white onions. Mm -hmm. A little butter, a little bit of oil, and you get the... You see how nice and brown you get these mm -hmm. onions? The smell is delicious. This is, this is... How long does it take to caramel to get to that state? Well, if you're close and you're mixing, you can speed it up a little bit. Okay. But otherwise, you know, about 10 minutes, Great. 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you add... Lots of mushrooms in here now, again. Now, is that typical for onion soup to have mushrooms? No, this is Lydia's way. This is, I thought so. <laughs> and I love mushrooms. Oh, you do. Well, I thought, you know, just adding a little bit more, making it the Italian way like that, and then you move on because mm -hmm. this takes a while to okay. cook. Yeah. You get it nice and caramelized, mm. and we're going to add some salt here. Okay. Make sure you add salt. Some thyme. Mm -hmm. You want to put in the sure, time? I love yeah, it. go ahead. I've got the time. You got the time to do the time. The wine? Yes. Go for it. Just any old white wine or like a dry white wine or? Dry. Yes, dry okay, white dry wine. wine. I'll put the stocks, uh, some pepper, mm -hmm. grind some pepper. Should I go crazy on the pepper or just a Depends little? Depends what you like. What okay. do you like? Uh, medium. So you see, this is so easy. Nobody so ever nice. makes this at home, but it's actually easy. Yeah. It's like nobody makes this mm. you think, soup. Like you it's think difficult. It's, yeah, but it's, it's not. difficult, but it's not. Once you've made it, and then you can make different days. You know, it doesn't have to be all in one day. Mm -hmm. We can do it like this individually. You let it boil, you let mm. it sort of, you like it? Mm -mm. Okay. You top it, put it in individually, oh or you can do it family style, just oh. like what that. What is the cheese on top? This is grana, and this is fontina cheese. Oh, fontina. And you put the, the toast right on top. Mm -hmm. Lydia, the mushrooms are a revelation mm -hmm. in Isn't onion soup, don't you think, Gabe? What do you guys think? Yes, Yummy. it's fantastic. It, you know, the, the, it gives it body. It, it gives really it, does. Mm -hmm. that it makes chewy. it a meal. Yes. It makes it a meal. And then if you have a nice salad just like that, you see, just like this, you put it on a tray, you put it in the oven, and you just ba you're baking off the top of it. Everything's already just, cooked, yeah, right? Everything yeah. is cooked. So you can do Easy. this ahead of time oh, so when your guests oh. come. Oh, you just throw it in the oven for Throw it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Have a little salad. Again, while you have the oven going, you're going a little bit of uh, acorn squash, carrots, roast them, mm -hmm. toss them with escarole. You know, escarole mm -hmm. is a nice winter soup, mm -hmm. winter salad, mm -hmm. and dive. And you put some uh, toasted almonds, yes. some chichi beans. What kind some, of dressing do you like? Uh, that's uh, uh, balsamic vinegar mm -hmm. and oil. Okay. Simple. Mm -hmm. The squash in this just makes it. Mm. it Isn't really the squash good? Squash is delicious. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you like the cheese? The uh, the uh, the uh, ricotta salata on top. Oh yeah. 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 I'm still yeah. Yeah. Make it over oh, here. Salty's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So you know ricotta salata. Ricotta. We all love ricotta. It's sure. like curds of fresh milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know when the farmers got a lot of ricotta, they would dry it. 
salted, yeah. and mm. it will keep longer. This is oh, such a pretty It turns salad. out into a ricotta salata used in Italy a lot on salads, mm. on pastas, and all kinds of this stuff. Is what, is your, what is your house like at Christmas, around the ho Thanksgiving, around the holidays? Oh, it's wonderful. It smells wonderful. I can only uh, imagine. Tree, kids running around. Mm. They're big now, my kids. You know, they used to be small. Mm. But, but I get the neighbor's kids. Because this, <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Imagine mm. Thanksgiving. We'd be 400 I'm checking that Congratulations. But you see, these are all recipes in the new book. Simple, one pot, yeah, straightforward, easy. you know, and uh, not too many pots to clean. No, exactly. Delicious, delicious. Now, this is made, I think, with chicken stock, but you can make it also vegetarian, mm. with oh, vegeta well, it vegetable stock. Terrific. So get good. your hands on yeah. Lydia's A Pot, A Pan, and A Bowl. Just head to today.com slash shop, and we're going to have her recipes for you available today.com slash food. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You know the saying, mm. chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just We didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. I no, I'm, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup. Mm. And the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same the size, same. really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek, and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there, mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology, just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time, so it should not take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. Crispy. So hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? 
Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than onions, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, turns yeah. really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the – my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So we have a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four-pound chicken just like this. Use a tongue so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there. All right? And then another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh. Tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. for a second. What does that gelatin. mean? Gelatin. Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Hmm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to. Just a little acid. Now, we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're going to put it on a rack and let it cool, and then we're going to take all the delicious yes, chicken off. peel it off. So, you take the bones out? Or you, yeah. Right? I take the bones out, everything. Okay. And then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right? We're just going to slide that slide in there. Away. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We, the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup. Our beautiful veg, our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty, gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Good shot, Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are now, you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful whole wheat ramen. I just oh, put you that can in buy the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Uh, there's tons of it. Tons of oh. it. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. Look at that. Yum. Full ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yeah. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now, I choose to put the chicken mm -hmm. on oh, the just chicken like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the stock. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a pho. Yes. We're going to put some, some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. Ooh. Oh, Ginger. Jeffrey. Jeffrey got thank you. We got to roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah. I love you, too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
here with one of her family's favorites is cooking show host and internet star Laura Fatale of YouTube's Laura in the Kitchen. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. How are you? We're doing great. Can I tell you a true story? So this morning Hi. when I was prepping for your segment, I read over the recipe and I was like, you know what? This is doable. So I took the notes from my desk this morning and put them in my bag Ooh. so that I can make this yeah. today. So here we go. So there's nothing better, obviously, enjoying soup. Let's talk about what you're making today because it's more than a soup. It's like a comfort dish. So I love the idea of like a ravioli dinner or a lasagna dinner, which, you know, it's a very rich, long cooking process that's just so soul satisfying, right? However, I find myself wanting those comfort dishes on a Tuesday evening where like time and patience is short. Um, and I really want something that's quick, easy, that my whole family's gonna love because I have a very picky four-year-old um, that just, that hits the spot. So this mini ravioli soup really came, the idea for it really came from a bag of mini ravioli that I got from Trader Joe's. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, they would be fantastic in a really savory sausage infused tomato broth situation. Mm. And that's kind of where the recipe came from. But it's also incredibly versatile. Like today, I'm gonna be using pork sausage that I, all I did was in the, for this instance, I went ahead and just crumbled it with my carrots and my celery. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add my onions to it. You can also just slice it in little coins. A good tip there is to put your sausage in the freezer for about 10 minutes before you slice it because it's just a fatty cut of meat, so it's hard to get a nice clean cut. Uh, but you can just crumble it. If you don't like sausage but your family prefers meatballs, add some frozen mini meatballs to this. No one's going to judge. Right. Um, okay. If you're like my sister who once in a while she decides she's a vegetarian, That's that's us. Add a can of chicken. That's what I was gonna do. I was gonna, I was I gonna do yeah. chicken. Yeah, my son I was gonna do chickpeas. Impossible Burger. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could do the Impossible Burger crumbled up in here, and yep. that would be fantastic. Or like I said, a can of chickpeas. Yep. And then all I do is I just sauté that with your usual aromatic suspects that go in any soup or stew. You've got carrots. You've got onion. You've got celery. Okay. To it, I want to add a lot of garlic because oh, again, garlic. when we're talking about something that is quick cooking easy to put together, you really want to hone in on really strong, bold flavors. So again, lots of garlic, lots of onions, and then it always makes everything taste like you waste, you spent so much more time um, on it than you really did. Laura, you know what, what, do you mean? Do, what do you do with the broth? Because I, we wanted to do chickpeas, that version, but I know she used beef mm -hmm. broth. Do we still use the broth? You know what I mean? Or what you do we do? You can use vegetable broth. You can use vegetable broth if you, if you're not a vegetarian, you can also use chicken broth if you are going to use chickpeas. But really, I really love getting, um, whenever, every time I come to the city, I will make a pit stop at Italy because they have the most fantastic Italian uh, vegetable broth cubes, Ooh. you know? So they're like bouillon cubes, but they're vegetarian and they are so packed with flavor and low sodium. Yeah. I love them. And sometimes I'll just boil that for my daughter with a little bit of pastina and some chicken and she loves it, Sounds and amazing. lots of parm. So I like to keep it as easy as possible, especially when it's just, you know, it's cold, it's miserable, and you're working <laughs> from home and you have the kids. And right, and you want it quick. Who was no, that? <laughs> How long do you let it simmer for, and what is that that you're cutting? So what I'm cutting off right now is the rind of some Parmesan, right? Mm. So oh. the rind has incredible flavor, and all I'm going to do, now that I'm going to add my tomato sauce and my beef stock, I'm going to add this alongside so that it infuses all of my soup with this lovely salty Parmesan Ooh. cheesy flavor that it is, it makes or breaks a soup for me. Mm. <laughs> um, it's my favorite. But once you have all of your aromatics and your sausage looking really good, I'm gonna go ahead and add some tomato pots. I always have uh, marinara sauce on hand because, because I do. Sure. <laughs> um, because I don't think any Italian doesn't. So I just <laughs> use a couple of cups of leftover marinara sauce, but this works great with like crushed tomatoes or open up a can of diced tomatoes. Um, it's really no fuss at all. And then you're gonna add your beef stock. Now, if good. you're adding beef stock, chicken stock, whatever you're adding, just make sure it's a good quality. Because again, if you're using few ingredients in something that cooks kind of quickly, you just wanna make sure you're using the best quality ingredients you can. Then you take your Parmesan rind and you bury it in there. 
I like to go with a little Italian seasoning. If you don't have it, all it is is just some dried parsley. This looks basil. so, so amazing. Good. We're gonna put the full recipe yeah. online, Laura. But and the good yeah. news is, if you don't have ravioli and you just have pasta in your just closet, you could pasta. put that in too. So looks thank so you. If Dinner you tonight. Much, you I know. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Second. I'll post it. <laughs> If you don't have ravioli, you can go ahead and just use rice or pasta or anything like that. It doesn't have to be mini ravioli. Okay. It can be tortellini. It looks but amazing. Look, it looks that amazing. Comes to a boil, that's it. Once That's you it. come to Laura, a boil, you just we're running out of time. Boil. Thank you so <laughs> much. We'll put everything help. online. It looks good. To get this recipe, go to today.com slash food. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking. Man, yeah, Who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the rap <laughs> Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. Doesn't it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Okay. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. So a lot of people think you can get concussions by doing really dangerous Hollywood stunt stuff. But the reality is you can get a concussion by doing something easy like, whoa, that's slippery and I just fell. So Rebel, you're here doing a PSA on brain injuries, on concussions. What brought you to that subject? Well, a few things. First of all, I've had a concussion myself. Mm -hmm. I was working on a movie set and it wasn't like some cool Hollywood stunt gone wrong or like some cool story really to tell. So there was grass and it was wet and I was like, everybody be careful, that's slippery there. And then literally a second later, I fall down the hill and go bang, my legs went out from under me. I fell backwards and hit my head and was unconscious for a few seconds. And that was the first time something like that had ever happened to me. But luckily I was like, okay, I think because it's my brain and I went unconscious, I think I should get it checked out. Um, and I, they took me to the hospital and I did have a concussion. And I have a movie coming out right. called The Almond and the Seahorse, which deals with um, traumatic brain injuries and mm. how that not only affects the people who suffer from them, but also their partners and their families. And it's a really like moving, different kind of film to my glossy comedies that I'm known for. You've got a form of amnesia from when you were ill two years ago. He's really struggling. You can't see a broken brain. It was something that, it was such an important subject matter and I hadn't seen a, a movie like deal with it in that, those kind of ways. I've seen documentaries uh, about yeah. some brain injuries, but not ever like, you know, a drama film. And I just thought it was such a beautiful moving script. We yeah. have a line that says, you can't see a broken brain. Right. And I think it's, it's so poignant because 
you just, um, you look all right. When I had my concussion, I looked all right. And they're like, okay, back to work, you go. Because I, I looked fine. Let's talk about your film because I saw it and it's beautiful. It's also really sad yeah. uh, because people don't understand what's actually going on with your husband in the film or people in general who have brain issues. And it's a serious role for you, right? Yeah. And you started in serious drama. I actually, like when I first started acting, Maria, I thought I was going to be the next Dame Judi Dench. Right. I, I didn't think of myself as being funny at all. Like no one would have looked at me and gone, oh yeah, she's hilarious. Um, so I, I really started as a serious actress and did Shakespeare's and all the kind of classics um, in Australia. It's just like nobody internationally has seen, seen that work for me. Right. And then um, I was filming a movie a few years ago with Robin Williams mm -hmm. and I was doing like a really fun comedy scene and Robin came over to me and he's like, you should do drama as well. And I was like, oh, how did you get that from me doing like comedy? And he's like, he looked at me, he's like, no, you should be doing drama. And that conversation like really stayed with me. And then when this beautiful script came along, The Almond and the Seahorse, I was like, okay, I think, I think I really want to do this. And um, Why did you really want to do it? What was it that when it you, because you so... read something and you just think like, that's it, I've got to make this come to life. I mean, one that I had dated a guy who had a traumatic brain injury and, and I learned from that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I felt like this movie kind of honors uh, in a way people who've yeah. had traumatic brain injuries and I, I really liked that aspect of it. Um, there was another element in that, um, well, I have an affair with French actress Charlotte Gainsbourg in it. Yeah. And at that point, I'd never kissed a woman before. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that could be interesting um, to try that out. <laughs> And then I just thought, like the the message of the film, like it's just it's just so beautiful. When you said that Robin Williams put the seed in your brain that you should do drama, yeah, he also had struggled with his brain. Yeah. Did that come in at all to this? It just made me think of it when you said it, that because well, like, he, he. I mean, this was literally like two months before he passed away. The, our conversation, and yet I, you wouldn't have known anything was wrong with him. We were chatting, it was 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning, we were mm. doing a night shoot, and you know, and just talking really normally. You would, I wouldn't have had any sense um, that anything is wrong, and I guess that's the thing. You yeah. Know, you don't really know what's going on in, inside somebody. In reading about you, I read that you, when you first started in drama, doing drama in Australia, and then people started to laugh, and then you <laughs> leaned into that. And yeah. I thought that's such a, pivotal decision to make because so many people the same thing could happen to them and they'd give up yeah <laughs> and they just walk away and say I'm never going to do that again right and you leaned into it there's a lesson in there for millions of people what made you lean in instead of give up what made me not give up yeah is because weirdly the year before I'd, I got malaria in South Africa mm -hmm. and I was like hallucinating in the hospital and I like hallucinated that I was an actress and that I was really good and won an Academy Award. Uh -huh. So for some reason that little vision kept driving me even though like I you know I don't think I was particularly good when I first started acting uh, you know and then I had the experience where everyone laughed at me. I also had like an experience where I bombed trying to do stand-up comedy in front of like 2,000 people and everyone was like oh my god my own mother was in the audience <laughs> and she's like I really don't think performing is for you and I was like oh um, but there was something in me, I don't know whether it was that vision, um, but it just kept driving me to go, okay, no, I can, you know, keep going. I am going to be really successful. And no one, no one believed it until it's really started to happen. But you believed it. Yeah, I really had this inner confidence that I knew I could make it, even though statistically, like for a girl from where I'm from in Australia, to mm -hmm. not only make it in Australia, but then to come to Hollywood, it's really rare. Right. So, but I just, for some reason, I had that vision, that malaria induced hallucination. And I was like, no, I am gonna make it. Part of the reason why it's great doing drama roles is because the comedy never gets recognized. Right. And I was like, if that vision comes true, <laughs> Like, I have to do a serious drama, probably. But your recognized. comedy has been recognized, right? I mean, you came here and, like, instantly was recognized. I was very lucky. My first job here in America was yeah. a movie called Bridesmaids, right. which was a huge hit. Oh, hey, Rumi. Guess what happened to me today? Mm, what? 
I got a free tattoo. You did I could what? not believe it. The guy said, do you want a tattoo? Just opened a random... Up, yeah, opened up the side of his van. No. He said, it's for free. I said, sure. You said yes? Yeah, yeah. Look. Oh, See here. what is it? See that? Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Friend. It's a Mexican drinking worm. It's like a Native American symbol, okay. meaning wasted. Okay. I had auditioned for the Melissa McCarthy role and didn't get it, but they liked me, I guess, so they, they added me into the film. And that was just, like, an amazing first job, to come here and just be like, you know. Uh, Did you feel then, like, I've made it, this is it, this is what I, this was my hallucination? It was probably Pitch Perfect that came after Bridesmaids, and mm -hmm. then literally the day that movie came out, I became internationally famous. Can you match pitch? Try me. Uh, uh, yeah. That was a really good start. <laughs> I'm the best singer in Tasmania. I couldn't like no longer go to the grocery store in my pajamas. Mm -hmm. I had to stop all of that <laughs> and just like and you know realize all oh, people are probably going to know who I am now. And what did the, did you feel like? Okay, that's what I dreamt, or did you feel like nope, the hallucination still? I is still not. feel like until I win an Academy Award, I won't have achieved it. So that's why I guess you know. I'm trying these different roles and, you know, and still pushing, like I still think, even though I'm now in my 40s, mm -hmm. that I'm like st only still now coming into like um, the work that I was supposed to do. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening, we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We comes. begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I read in a quote that you said you think women are beautiful when they step into their power. Yeah. Are you feeling just now that you're stepping into your own power? For me, there's something about turning 40 yeah. that I just was like... Oh, like, yes, I was trying to build a career and yes, I was being successful and stuff, but I didn't feel like totally me until I like was turning 40. It's something about you, yeah, you, you're you not doing things for other people or you're like, I don't know, you're living a fuller, healthier life. And um, I, I definitely wasn't doing that before. And I don't know, I, I don't know, I feel like a late bloomer in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you overnight, you're like, oh, okay. I'm a fully formed, evolved person. Like it takes work, and like I did a lot of that with my. I had in 2020, I did my year of health, where I like yeah. um, tried to transform and uh, and become like a healthier version of myself. And through that, I did a lot of like emotional work, um, and then it kind of you know it, all that slowly, month after month of doing that, led to like more. I don't know, being at ease with yourself. So I read uh, where you said that, look, I've done all this work, this film work, and yet everybody wants to talk to me about my year of health, about losing weight. Yeah, I, I feel like I got more attention from losing 80 pounds than I had for doing like 20 movies, uh, which was, I don't know, like I was, 
It was intriguing. People are obsessed with like losing weight, especially here. Yeah. Yeah. So what did that say to you? Did you did you feel like okay, I'm gonna lean into this like you did when you were like <laughs> trying to do drama? Well, part of it, I wasn't were... shy about like posting thirst traps on Instagram. So you kind of said like I'm gonna lean into this year of health. I'm gonna bring everybody along on it. Yeah, the, I made it public for accountability. <laughs> Right. Because I'd tried in the past to lose weight before and, you know, tried hard for a few weeks and then kind of given up. And I was like, okay, well, if I make it public, then I have to follow through. And you said you did emotional work along with that. Talk to me about that. Because yeah. so often people uh, lose weight, but their inner self doesn't catch up with that. So they fall back yeah. because they haven't done the inner and the outer work. I had to do a lot of like, I suffer from emotional eating. Mm -hmm. So in order to kind of manage that, which I, and I can never really cure it. Right. Um, but in order to manage it, you're like, you have to do like, go back to why, why these emotions are there and, uh, what happened in my past to like, kind of trigger that. And, um, and it was ugh, like, it's sad and you cry and you, um, you know, and you work through things and sometimes you have to have difficult conversations with people. And I was like, yeah. So at one point I thought, oh, is this the right thing to do? But, but it really d did help um, because the weight was kind of a sign of me ca holding all these things and ca like carrying them with me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to release that. And the only way was to release all the emotions attached to it. I think, and I think that work made me a better actress one of my friends who's also a director, he's going, I think you're a better actress now because you're more emotionally um, vulnerable and raw because I'm not carrying all that stuff around me to protect myself. So how did you do that? Did you work with a therapist? And... Yeah, yeah. A guy who, um, I think he's uh, Dr. Siddiqui, who was famous oh, for yeah, uh, yeah. like Gwyneth Paltrow's um, uh, as well. Did you eat him. the sardines and the rice? Did, did he put you on that? I didn't do that. <laughs> but, I, you know, I read that chapter in the book. Yeah. Uh, no, I, d I didn't do that, mm -hmm. but I just talked through, like, um, every two weeks had a phone call and, like, talked through things that were going on in my life and, mm -hmm. and how that your um, uh, mental health can affect your physical health. And mm -hmm. it was really, like, in I'd never done anything before like that. I guess in Australia you don't really talk about stuff. There's mm -hmm. a culture of that. Um, and in America I think people are much more open about it. Mm -hmm. And... And so it was like, at first it was like so weird to tell a stranger like some of your innermost feelings, yeah. but then you, you kind of get used to it and you slowly like releasing stuff. And then it was weird as I was doing that, the weight would slowly come off. What did you discover about yourself through that? I mean, one of the things was probably um, sexuality. Like I thought maybe I was 100% straight before I did that. And then I realized, oh, maybe I'm not 100% straight. I don't know what what label I am, but mm -hmm. like, um, that was, that was definitely something that came up. Um, but also like, it's weird. I'm so shy. I'm like a very introverted person, but then I've chosen a career <laughs> that's yeah. like extremely extroverted. And so all that pressure and stress, it comes with a lot of anxieties cause it's not my normal state. Like my normal thing is just to like be at home and chilling. Um, and so all of that and things to do with fame and stuff like, um, were causing me to like eat and, and that was my way of coping, coping with things. So how do you do that now? Because now you've like put yourself out there, like, you know, I'm, I've lost weight. I have yeah. a baby. I'm in a new relationship of same sex relationship and it's all out there and you're an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it's hard. And it's also hard for people because actors are normally in two categories. Some are introverts and extremely shy. Um, and how I think, you know, I became an actress because I would watch other people because I was so shy. I was not engaging in things socially, but I was watching people. Right. And so that's how I learned things about people and how to, you know, perform different characters from watching. But then there's the other camp that they're so extroverted and, you know, out there. And, um, you know, they're the kids that people say, oh, you should move to Hollywood. Like, right. you're crazy. <laughs> um, and so I don't know, but it's my passion. To, to be an actress and um, I think uh, for some reason because I was so shy playing other characters helped me be able to express myself yeah. because I was like well it's not me it's the character so I could be in the high school musical and pretend to be somebody I'm not um, and but then I could have all these confidence as the character and and so slowly and slowly that confidence merged into me 
being me. Uh, but it took a while, even when I started first doing stand-up, I would always do it as a character, like I'd never do it as me. Right. And, yeah. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. love riding the This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. Love riding the this is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The me that is right here now. The me, is this a new me that came out of the year of health, that came out of looking at um, your emotional eating, who you were, your sexuality, your um, personhood? I definitely think I've changed, but like, I don't know, I think of myself as a car, like, you know, I'm 42 now. Like, if you had a 42-year-old car, you're gonna make some changes to it? Like, yeah. otherwise it'd be all ratty and gross. <laughs> by 42 years old. So I've definitely, I think, made some upgrades. Uh -huh. You're a new mom. Yes. You announced that, that you had a baby through surrogacy, and that you also said that you had kind of started on this year of health to try to become a mother yourself. Yeah, that's what really kick-started. I was turning 40, and then even though I was a career woman and I didn't, I didn't think, I wasn't sure, um, you know, in my 20s that if I wanted a family, I didn't, um, and I really went after my career and my mum's like, yeah, get out into the world and, and crush it because she had um, me when she was 24. And so I was like, um, I was getting to 40 and then I was like, oh, I, I really do want to become a mother. I had, every time I'd see a child and, you know, in the street, I'd be like the weird person, like really staring <laughs> at them and like, oh, I really wanted that. Um, and I just think, you know, there's something about creating life and it's so beautiful. But at the time I didn't have a partner and, um, and so I went to the fertility doctor and he kind of looks me up and down and says, oh, well, you'd have a much better chance if you were healthier. And and for, that was the first time where I was like, I mean, I knew logically I was overweight, but I didn't, it was, when it, it was weird when this guy just said, you know, really looked at me with disdain and, um, mm. and I, I really was like, oh, hang on. And then I thought, you know, it was, I was so angry at first. And then I was like, it's like, oh, I'm never going back to him. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, hang on. Like I am putting a lot of things into my body and a lot of toxins that I don't need. Mm. And I know if I really deep down um, be truthful that I'm in, you know, engaging with habits that aren't healthy for myself. So I was like, you know what? Once I got over the anger of it, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, I could be a healthier version of myself. And I didn't necessarily want to be skinny or anything, but I just wanted to be healthier. And that the fertility journey really is what kickstarted it because I, it was almost like, um, cause I tried so many times to lose weight and be healthier before, but now thinking of like a future me, like a yeah. mini me, that really gave it some gravitas for, for me to make a lifelong change with health. Um, and 
And then it was devastating when I'd gone through like three egg harvesting procedures and done all of that. And then whilst I was filming Almond and the Seahorse, um, I tried to create embryos from the eggs yeah. and, and none of them survived. And I'd, I'd done all this and I'd lost 80 pounds and I'd been healthy and done everything the doctors had said and, and then was, um, you know, feeling awesome and then it, it didn't work. Yeah. Um, and I, I like all 18 eggs that I had, it was like none of them worked. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, and wow. it was such an emotional roller coaster. And then I found that out whilst I was filming the movie and it just really resonated with the character as well because she yeah. really wanted to have a child. And I was like, oh, my God. But then I was like, no, nah, OK, you know, I am gonna can still try again. I was still young enough to try a few more times. And then luckily got my gorgeous baby girl. And how has becoming a mother changed your life? Well, I'm very new to it. Yeah, but it's <laughs> like it's, it's the first time you hold your child in your arms. Oh, because uh, and having a baby by a surrogate, is, you know, is a bit different of an experience because you in a way feel a little bit disconnected. Right. Uh, even though I had this gorgeous surrogate who was, you know, um, so loving and so awesome to um, get to do this with her uh -huh. but then it's not until the ba the baby literally popped out it was almost like a comedy scene the baby just <laughs> pops out with the surrogate and then you you hold the baby and cut the umbilical cord and literally from from that moment you're just like it was just like amazing and so emotional and then your life changes again massively in an instant and um and it's just, it's just a beautiful miracle and I just she's such she's so precious and I know every mother you know We'll probably say that, um, but it's really challenging. Mm. Uh, I have this big international career, and um, you know, and like the breadwinner of my family, I mm -hmm. like to think. Um, yeah. And so, um, it's, so it's really challenging to like. Well, now how do I do all the things and and be a great mother and great partner and all of that. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So you get the baby and then you announce that you are in a new relationship and you put out a great quote. I thought you, you said, I was always looking for a Disney prince, but I didn't realize I was actually looking for a Disney princess. Yeah. <laughs> no. Really something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was that, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so yeah. what... Because I really didn't... Yeah, it kind of took me by surprise. Uh -huh. um, and who would have known kissing Charlotte Gainsbourg in, um, in, this new in The Day. Almond and the Seahorse? Uh, and then I was like, I was so nervous about doing it as well because I'd never kissed a woman before. And then, and then I was like, and obviously it's acting and it's not real life, so you're just like, okay, I'll go for it. And then, and then it kind of led to this kind of discovery and, um, which led to my awesome partner, Ramona. And I, I don't know whether that would have happened if I, you know, I might not have been open to that if I hadn't have done the emotional work and then had the stuff with, um, with Charlotte in the movie that it was kind of like a little um, crack opening uh, to that possibility. What advice has your mother given? You said you're, when you were starting out, your mother said crush it because she was 24 and had a child yeah. and perhaps had a very different life than you had. I think she felt like my mother's a very smart woman and um, 
went into teaching because a lot of the women in her generation um, went into teaching in Australia. And so I think she wanted um, she wanted me to just have a I guess a bigger life than than what she had. And so she was always like, you know, just go out there, go into the world, experience the world, go and go and crush it. Because I don't know, I think she felt that um, she was a mum of four kids and at times a single mother. So she, I think she tried to discourage me from, um, you know, having kids too young and, and stuff like that. But when you freak out now about how much has changed or is changing or you're in the, does she have advice for this part of your <laughs> well, life? Well, she's just been here helping, helping with oh. the baby. I think she was just so happy for me because she oh. knew how much it meant. Um, and what I've been through emotionally on the journey of doing all the egg harvesting and like, uh, uh, you know, and she was there when it, you got a good phone call from the doctor and then when you got a bad phone call. And so I think she was just so, so happy and she's such a proud grandma. Yeah. And totally accepting of you being in a same sex relationship. Yeah. Well, that was like, um, she was the person I was most nervous to tell because I come from quite a conservative family. And so when I'd met Ramona and I made sure it was like, it was a serious relationship before telling her. And then I was like, ah, oh, Ma, remember how <laughs> you heard my friend Ramona talking on the phone? She's like, yeah. Go, oh, well, she's not she's like, she's my girlfriend. She's like, oh, Ramona's a woman. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh, you're dating a woman. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh, well, that's great, darling. And like she just um, instantly, like there wasn't even a split, you know, of like, huh, or shock or like, she was just like, oh, great. And then um, she met Ramona, um, she came to Los Angeles and then uh, Ramona's like, you, uh, you can ask me anything, Sue, like anything you want to know or whatever. And my mum just leans in and goes, is that your real hair colour? <laughs> I'm like, ma, she meant about sexuality. And <laughs> Stuff and it was like, yeah, it was pretty funny. But just like that, accepting. Yeah, which was really felt amazing. Like the fact that my whole family was like that. Even my grandparents were in their 90s, who again, you know, I didn't know how they'd react. There's, there's nobody on the spectrum of sexuality in my family. I guess they would all um, describe themselves as straight. So I was like, you know, it was a new thing and they were just amazing. They were just like, you know, instantly like, oh yeah, that's awesome. So here we are, 42, we have a child, we have a serious drama coming out, mm -hmm. we have a new relationship, and we still have this drive to get up onto that stage to win that Oscar for something serious. I'm like that I'm taking the stepping stones to like, you know, show that versatility now. But that's the hallucination, the vision. Yeah, but we, I think it will come true at some point. For sure. I don't know when. Hopefully it's not when I'm like 80. <laughs> Hopefully it's before then. <laughs>
Michelle Williams plays Spielberg's mother in a performance that is probably perfect. It was so powerful, and you are this person who actually lives the life she wants to live yeah. to a yes. great degree yeah, in the movie. Thank you. That's the most beautiful thing I could possibly hear. It's really how we all, if we're brave enough, want to live. The heart, though, is not a compass. Where it leads is often not ideal or perfect. I knew things that nobody else in my family knew about my mom and about my dad's best friend. <laughs> Seth Rogen plays the friend. You think whatever bad things you want about me, kiddo, but you stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. Into all of which appears a man almost apparition-like, a great uncle, played by Judd Hirsch. You see, what she got in her heart is what you got, what I got. Art. Like me, like you, I think. We're junkies, and art is our drug. Gabriel LaBelle nails the teenage filmmaker. And as for working with Spielberg? It's thrilling, it's intimidating, it's uh, nerve-wracking, and you know that it's going to be incredibly significant. Paul Dano adds the father role to an already impressive resume. I want you to make a camping trip movie. And I thought that the father was such a quietly complicated character because he had to keep so much of his own experience to himself, I think, for his family's behalf, but also because maybe he didn't quite know how. Right. To there was so much it. yearning in him yes. to connect with his son. I don't know what to do anymore. What was it like to be filming in the memories of your own childhood? It was hard because the more I shot in the house, the more I remembered how much I loved living there. I loved Arizona, I loved living in the desert. I loved having my family around me. And so I mourned the loss of my childhood as I was recreating aspects of my childhood. Wow. Williams immersed herself in Spielberg family memories. These beautiful family archives, the photos, the home movies, the tape recordings, her laugh, her sound, her clothes, her smell, her perfume. You know, one of the things I loved about working with Michelle is after a take, and she could tell I was really happy with the take, she didn't accept happiness as a reason to stop here. And she'd always walk over to me and she'd get very close to me and she'd just sort of take my wrist in her hands and said, anything else? Anything, anything else? Anything, anything else. You know that thing they say about an actor embodying a character? That's Williams in The Fablemans. I cried so hard that they thought something was wrong with me on the night that we wrapped. And I just, it was very hard to say goodbye. Arizona will never leave me. Thank you. Right? Whoa. You crushed me. Whoa. You totally crushed me. You guys. Oh, my <laughs> Thank God. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. Thank you very much. No pressure. Right there. No pressure. Taking on the great Steven Spielberg's entire family. They did a great job with that. And coming up, we're going to hear from an actress who's nominated this year, Michelle Yeoh. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Welcome back. The film Everything Everywhere All at Once defies all genres and earned six nominations at this year's Golden Globes, among them Best Comedy and Best Actress for its star Michelle Yeoh, making her the first Malaysian Chinese actress to be honored in that particular category. She told our third hour why she was so thrilled when she read the part and what the role meant to her. Michelle Yeoh played a mother who fiercely loved her son, not so much his girlfriend, <laughs> crazy rich Asians. Now, last year, she was the aunt taking her superhero nephew under her wing in Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Well, now, Michelle takes center stage in everything, everywhere, all at once. She plays <laughs> Evelyn, a laundromat owner, who finds out there are multiple universes and then discovers some skills she didn't know she had. Just so you know, Michelle Yeoh does all of her own stunts <laughs> as well. So this is a movie everyone's buzzing about. Roker's been talking about it all morning. When you read the script initially, what was it about the script that, that sucked you in? Oh, wow, that was the first time in many years that I'd read a script that was written for an older, Asian, ordinary woman mm -hmm. and who turns into a superhero. Mm. Right, it was, yeah. I, I, my initial response was like, I have to meet the two Daniels who wrote, to see, to wrote it, to see if they were insane, that you know, <laughs> they really had to be locked up in an asylum, or I was in for the best ride of my career, oh, yeah. wow. because I felt that it was like everything, finally I will get to showcase all the things all I would love my audience to see what mm -hmm. I'm capable of, and in everything, everywhere, all at once, exactly like the title, I get to be in like five genres of movie yeah. mm -hmm. in one movie, All in one big bagel. That's the, uh, the, the everything bagel, <laughs> which is an important part of the movie. But what's interesting is this is a movie that de defies genre. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a mm -hmm. love story. It's a romance. Mm -hmm. It's an action movie. Mm -hmm. It's a sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what really appreciate, you appreciated about this script? For definitely, for sure, because it's like a, the woman is the most unlikely hero. You know, and what it also teaches is like failures actually make you hopefully a better person. Mm -hmm. And in all the despair, this immigrant family comes over here for the American dream. Mm -hmm. And it, you know what kind of dream it can sometimes turns out to be. Mm -hmm. But what happens here is like even in all the despair and struggles and whatever, they find joy and love. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the familial connections yes. between the mother and daughter, the core of the story, the husband and wife, and an ordinary woman that you pass by on the streets mm -hmm. every day, somebody's mother or auntie or grandmother who is so unnoticed is given an opportunity to have an amazing voice, mm -hmm. a great voice. And at the end of the day, we find out that Actually, we all have a superhero power wow. within us, which is kindness. And if we can exercise that superpower, be kind. Every, yeah. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Just be kind to yourself mm -hmm. and to each other. We will make such a heck of a difference. It is a superpower. It is a super and that we all have and mm -hmm. we can use. So reading it and then getting a chance to meet the crazy, my evil geniuses, the Daniels. Mm -hmm. um, well, they had the courage to write it. Mm -hmm. It's a multiverse, too, and you've got the hand. Oh, yes. A, yeah. one, you recognize it. multiverse because. that everybody in the, that universe has hot dog fingers. Yes. <laughs> we were downstairs in the dressing room this morning, and people didn't know what was happening. Like, and happening? a couple Michelle, people yeah. were like, guys, look at that lady's. That lady, you know, we're trying not to be rude in that spot. Just FYI, downstairs now, people downstairs who are watching are gonna go, oh, yes, it all makes it's sense. Michelle's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not her real digit. But in this, I play, I, I play opposite Jamie Lee Curtis, who's the main antagonist mm -hmm. in my life, in Evelyn Wong's life, because she's being audited. And Jamie plays she's this. unrecognizable. Deal, totally. Yeah. We're all unrecognizable <laughs> in, in the awesome. sense. And in this universe, we have hot dog fingers. <laughs> There's even veins on the hands. Look at oh. that on the front. Michelle, yo, thank yeah. you. And a big congrats to Michelle on that well-deserved nomination. Coming up, a Best Supporting Actress nominee, the legendary Angela Bassett.
is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. We're back in more of our special Golden Globes edition of Pop Star Plus today. The Best Supporting Actress category is absolutely stacked this year, including the one and only Angela Bassett for her performance in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Fun fact, she would make history as the first actor from a Marvel Cinematic Universe film to win a Golden Globe. Recently, Hoda and Jenna caught up with her. Okay, we have royalty in the house. We're so excited. In Black Panther, you know her as Queen Ramonda, but around here, she'll always be our queen, <laughs> Angela Bassett. Angela, what a privilege it is for us to have you here today. And I'm so excited. I'm, it was like my face. Well, I feel like we, we, <laughs> we just, see our faces. Yeah. We're like two kids. We were so happy because you were at a gala, the Wearable Arts Gala. Yes. We couldn't stop talking about you on our show. We're like, wait, wow. show the glow, show the shot. Yeah. I mean, this, when you're on the red carpet, like, I feel like you feel so at home. Is that what it feels like for you? It, it is. I mean, you, you you know, you get there, you know, it's like for a minute, for a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, my uh, stylist came up with this beautiful, beautiful ensemble. A lot of it that she made with the gloves and the cape. And that was such a different thing all together. And the color, the sparkle, the jewels. And uh, when you were a kid, did you love to like dress up or close your thing? Or was that something I you like came making to clothes for my little dolls? Oh, you do? Yes. I love that sewing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we were just saying um, when I got to meet you, you've been doing doing this for a long time. Yeah. You've been acting, you've been in this world for a long time, but it feels like you're having a moment yeah. right now. It does, a really <laughs> exciting, really nice, really wondrous moment. And so yeah. what does that feel like? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's fabulous. Yeah. It, it really is, you know, especially, you know, just the long, as you say, long, been here a long time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But the longevity, yeah. the consistency, you know, to be able to, you know, practice your craft and to have it acknowledged and received yes. in such a beautiful way, That's, you know, wonderful people. Well, they I'm, say, I'm really grateful. They say things happen right on time. I wonder what it is about this time. I mean, I know you've worked your whole life, but I wonder what it is that is bringing you to this moment now. Like, everywhere I feel like I look, I see you. Yeah. You're somewhere. Glamour yeah. Women of the Year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that. Um, I don't know, and I don't try to uh, dissect it yeah. too much. I just try to and stay in the moment and enjoy it. You know, this movie yeah. has oh, wow. has 
already sort of broken records. Yeah. The first one was a, a mm -hmm. groundbreaking mm -hmm. film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now to come back with mm -hmm. the loss of somebody that I know you loved, but also, you know, there's a new story. Mm -hmm. what, what does it feel like? Do you, are y'all so looking forward to having it out there? We are. It's a beautiful story. It's epic. It's exhilarating. It's extraordinary. And when, and women at the, are at the front and center of the telling of this story. And all the love and respect that we have for Chadwick and for his legacy mm -hmm. and for his leadership in the first one, I think he, he would have been proud. And we just, you know, wow. we're, we're just we're rooting strengthen for, ourselves. Yeah. We're rooting so for a woman to be it. Black Panther. We, we think don't there is a woman is, Black but Panther. But we are feeling we very feel that confident. Yes. Are, we yeah. right? are we right? <laughs> are we right? <laughs> well, when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's so many beautiful parts of your life. One of them is that you've been married for... 25 years. Mm -hmm. And there are so many beautiful parts of your story. You talked about how when you were growing up, a long relationship wasn't modeled. You were learning about that. What have you learned about a long relationship over these 25 years? Oh, my years? gosh. You take some negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some negotiating back and forth. Sometimes you get what you want. Sometimes I get what we want. Hopefully, yeah. we get what we want yeah. most of the time together. And forgiveness is key. Because, yeah. you know, we're only human, and we're bound to make some sort of mistakes, unintentionally, yeah. of course. But be able to ask for forgiveness and always be able to give it, yeah. to offer yeah. it, offer that grace. Yeah. I, I was reading that your husband, Courtney, who, of course, people know as an actor, yeah. too, said something to you. Oh, early yeah. on, like early the first on. week. Yeah, yeah. And what, what was it? <laughs> Divorce is not an option. Yeah. <laughs> like, Why are you talking about that? It's only been a week. <laughs> You see something in me? No, no. <laughs> yeah. Did that change sort of the, the DNA of, of y'all, the DNA of your choices as a couple? You, you know, it, you got to have at least one person mm -hmm. who can stand strong even in the midst of the storm, yeah. I think, you know. And, yeah. and uh, he having, you know, had mother, father and all of that and seen some storms there, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so well, ahead. So many remarkable things about your career. One that shocked both of us was that after you played Tina Turner, which was oh. a remarkable, yes, uh, obviously Oscar-worthy performance, nominated for an Oscar, um, you didn't get a phone call mm -hmm. for a gig, for a job, for more than a year. Yeah, about a year and a half. What, what Why? Is that? Oh, oh well, it. you know, it was just the time. Yeah. You know, that was long before streaming and all these other platforms where there were opportunities. You know, remember, we only had maybe like three and a half stations, ABC, yeah. CBS, NBC, and yeah. maybe something. But we had never seen a movie like this where a black woman was at the lead of this, wow. uh, you yeah. know, of the story. That was sort of new, new, new territory at that time. Were you upset that you didn't get any calls? Or were you wondering, like, what is it? Because there... You, you wonder, but... I, I, so I was so young, and that's, uh, you know, just being an artist and not the yeah. business part of show yeah. business, yeah. understanding what's going on there. But you just stay strong, and, you know, you heard stories from other actors, you know, in the theater who talked about how it you can become jaded, yeah. you know, and so it's always let's guard against guard that. Against that. Let's be mindful of that sort of like divorce is not an option. Don't yeah. become, yeah. you know, jaded by things that will happen or things that won't happen in your in your what, time. What is happening now? now? The yeah. queen and a keep learning, keep striving, keep moving forward, keep stay positive. Oh, yes. Where where do you find joy now? Like where are the most magical parts of your well, life? <laughs> <laughs> the hell, this very moment. <laughs> it is joyful, you yeah. know, here with you, uh, all the wonderful things that are happening right now in my life and, and also my, my, two, my two little angels at home, you know, Slade and Bronwyn, who are, who are 16 and growing up to be really wonderful, compassionate, lovely young people. So wait, most yeah. proud of do them. You, wait, you wow. have twins? Is that right? I do. She's a I'm twin. a twin. Oh, are you? Yes. Put the bars on the window now. No, <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of keep hands. But that's there's right. nothing. They, that's the most magical gift mm, as, a, yeah. as a twin. Mm -hmm. and she's yeah. my best friend. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Always great to see Angela. She's clearly living her best life. Coming up, we couldn't let this episode pass by without a white lotus recap. That's next. You get one beautiful life to live. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. People just cannot stop talking about the latest season of The White Lotus, and for good reason. After its big finale aired in December, now the drama uh, has scored a Best Limited Series Golden Globe nomination, as well as... Best supporting nods for both Jennifer Coolidge and Aubrey Plaza. Her first ever nomination. In fact, Aubrey spoke to Hoda and Jenna about the show along with co-star Adam DeMarco. HBO's The White Lotus was one of the buzziest new shows last year. Guess what? It won 10 Emmys, including Outstanding Limited Series. Okay, well, it's not limited anymore because we are so excited for the new season set in a Sicilian oh. resort with almost an entirely new cast, including Aubrey Plaza and Adam DeMarco. Here's a sneak peek. Welcome to the White Lotus in Sicily. We're on a family vacation right now, and it's just the three of us because all the women in our family hate you. Please, can we just drop it? Now that he's loaded, you think he regrets marrying such a dud? What is going on with you? There's a reason they invited us here. It's like you sold your company, you got rich, and now he's your best friend. Are these the kind of people we're going to be hanging out with now? Did you vote, babe? Be honest. I did. Didn't I? Doesn't matter. <gasps> Aubrey, oh. Adam. Oh. We want to discuss White Lotus so badly right this minute, except for there's one other thing we have to discuss right this yeah, minute. Yeah, there's some hats. You're wearing hats. There's What's hats. What? What, what are you talking about? We're so excited about the new season of White We're Lotus. So excited about White Lotus. And, yes. Wait. Season two is coming out it's this Sunday. Spooky. <laughs> are y'all just? Did y'all just plan this? What was the story? Did no. you text each other last night? What happened? No. You're I dead. actually didn't know. I didn't realize we were doing the interview together, but I'm so happy to see. You. Yeah, so good to see you. <laughs> so I have a question. Are you? Uh, <laughs> Wizard, or what's what's your situation? This season is so crazy. <laughs> it's like way more epic, sexier, darker. It's set in darker. Italy. It's set in so Italy. There's a volcano. Mm. Are there any witches? Involved. Or wizards? <laughs> I don't know. I don't sounds, like that spooky stuff. Sounds too scary for me. <laughs> when you guys first met on the set, I know we're ignoring your hats, which is weird. Yeah. But were you all friends right away? You have the same sense of humor, obviously. So was that it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Right away? No, no, we were. I was friends with you. Oh, right, because me, me and Michael got dinner oh, yeah. like that first night. Dinner. Yeah, that yeah, we was ran fun. into each other on the course. So, um, I was scared me at first. But then... I don't know why. <laughs> why she felt intimidating, or what was it? A little it? bit. Oh, how come? Really? Yeah. Tell us. I don't know. Um, because I left that thing in your room. Yeah. What was what it? What was it? Um. Aubrey left a witch, some witchcraft <laughs> symbols in my dressing room. Y'all are super... It was just like a welcome gift. I didn't know Can that. I, are you... Are y'all acting right now? What's happening? What, are you in the craft? We like, don't, don't know where I am. Do you remember it's the Halloween craft weekend. from the of course, 90s? Of course. I feel like you've got to be in, like, the craft remake or something. You're giving me I'll major do, I'll do whatever you guys vibes. want. I'll do whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about Jennifer Coolidge, please. Because I got to watch some of this yes. last night. First, I want to oh, ask really? you about what is going on, but I won't <laughs> spoil it for everybody. Jennifer Coolidge 
which is so good. She's a national treasure. She is a national we treasure. Did y'all try to protect her, her in, in, in Italy and make sure she was fine? She Well, you know, she had her own Italian bodyguards. And, yeah, she doesn't oh, need protection. Yeah, she, yeah she's, she's a queen. What's it know? like working with her? Because we think she is She's the funniest. Yeah. She's the funniest. You never know what she's going to say. She always has something ridiculous and hilarious. She's so spontaneous. What did you she's see her best. in that you loved when she went? Did you see her in the Reese Witherspoon? What is that? Legally Blonde. Oh, Legally Blonde. 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 All best the Christopher show. Guest, best, of her, yeah. best in show. Yes. Best in show. Bend and snap. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. Okay, so is there pressure? Because yeah. the first one was so big, the first season. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that? I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. This, this season feels so different. Like, Mike White was really good about writing a, just a totally different you know, vibe. And yeah. So it doesn't, it feels different. But, huh. but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, expectations. How did you get the call? Because this is such a hot show, and I know people are probably hoping maybe my phone will ring. How did it happen? I was taking out the trash. I was taking out my recycle. I was recycling. I was being a good person. <laughs> so maybe it was. Canadian. Yeah, I was and being a good Canadian. And, and then, then what um, my manager called me and was like, You're going to Sicily. <gasps> and, I, See, it, and I put the trash in the trash and put the recycling in the recycling. See, and I went you know what? Day. There is something about not only getting to do White Lotus, yeah. but also getting to shoot in Sicily for. Um, how yeah. ma- you were there for how long? I was there for five months. <gasps> yeah, I was for four. Did you love every second? Yeah. yeah. Who dies? <laughs> <laughs> no. Good one. I thought <laughs> maybe yeah. when they were wearing the hats, they Sometimes. would be, you know, confused. All right. So what did y'all do on your downtime? When you weren't acting, what was what kind of fun things did y'all do? Was there karaoke involved? Oh. Yeah, there was a, some karaoke What's nights. What's your karaoke song? Uh, Mr. Brightside. Oh, did you do a song? By the Killers? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I <laughs> usually like do. I usually wait till like the very end of the night, and then and then I do Enya just to like really <laughs> bring the room down, make everyone go home. And it's really awkward. So what else did y'all do during your do during a downtime? Five months, four months is a long time to hang. We ate. Yeah. We just ate dinners. So many dinners. Drinks. Went to the beach. Mm-hmm. Went to the beach. Couple times. Mm-hmm. Went hiked to. Hiking to the Wait, was cafe. it really shot in like the Four Seasons or something? Yeah, we sit, We lived in the hotel that mm-hmm. we were shooting in for like the first four months, um, and it's it's a Four Seasons in Taramina called the San Domenico, and it's actually an old restored like monastery convent. convent. So yeah. it's wow. like, very haunted. So witchy, and, witchy stuff was happening. A little bit. By the way, what, are, what are y'all gonna be for Halloween for real? Oh, um, do you celebrate? Yet. I, I'm, I'm like always an all year Halloween type. Person. Yeah, I'm all year always round. kind of. Well, Halloween is like the, the one yeah day out of the year that I I I, I am some kind of witch, but like the scariest version is of Halloween. a witch. And then I can like run down the street and scream at the top of my lungs and <laughs> just kind of normal. be my natural self. <laughs> and Adam, how about you? This year? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe like a. Skellington or something. A Skellington? <laughs> yeah, something spooky. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, um, you guys, know. this show is so good. Try one more time. Tell me who ca- dies in no. that Who dies in that ocean. You tell me who dies in that ocean. Oh, that was a good season of White Lotus. If you haven't seen it, a lot to unpack there. Uh, that's going to do it for Popstar Plus Golden Globes preview. Thanks so much for being here. We're going to uh, just wish everybody a big luck this year. If you're nominated, that's great. If you win, that's fantastic, too. You can catch the ceremony live coast to coast on NBC and streaming on Peacock. That'll be January 10th. We'll see you next time. fantastic meals you can whip up in no time. Chris Kimball is the founder of Milk Street. His new cookbook is called Milk Street. Cook what you have, make a meal out of almost anything. And everybody is telling me it's an awesome book to have in the house. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. To you. Yes. I love these recipes. We all have kids. You have a lot of kids. And it's just, it's this simple stuff you can put on the table that everyone can enjoy. It is a lot like a gaggle of kids. <laughs> I have, a, gaggle. I have yes. a lot. So we're starting with, is this tomato soup? Yeah, this is like, you have some leftover bread. You have some canned tomatoes. You start by heating some oil, uh, mm-hmm. carrots. Uh, this we can do. A I'm small like, yeah, this is nothing hard. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not Jacques Pepin here today. Okay. A uh, little thime, a little, little salt. Time. 
and just saute that for five to seven minutes. Okay. okay. Soft, easy. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then we add the can. This is what you always have in the pantry. Yep. A can of whole tomatoes you Great can use. Yeah, you this can use we all have. Crushed. <laughs> so far, so and good. You can just crush them with your hands, throw them in here. Okay. And cook that for maybe 10 minutes or so until okay. it reduces a little bit. Uh, then the chicken stock. Um, okay. That paste in the jars, I really like. I think that's pretty good stuff. Oh, but okay. But whatever you want. You could actually use water. Mm -hmm. You know, most people in the world actually don't use stock. They really? just use, well, who has the French yeah, stock? Yeah, you're right, you're right. But it's most true. places don't have you it. You don't so, have stock like okay. So yes. we get that up to temperature, and then okay. we throw in about five ounces of baby spinach. Nice, mm -hmm. so that wilts down. Baby arugula, or you could use kale and cook it a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's it. So it's stuff you mostly have try. around. Mm -hmm. Um, Where does the bread now, come in? Now, we did bread. We did four cups of bread. We put that in a hot oven for five to seven it? minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Did you it, drizzle olive oil on it? Yeah, or? a little olive oil, about okay. a tablespoon. And right. then this is something you can do in a skillet, by the way. Mm. Okay. If you have leftover bread. Oh, my gosh. Um, you can just throw that on it. And the bread soaks up all the mm. yummy. Mm. And then a little cheese. Oh, this is yummy. Oh, wow. Hearty. You know, I, a friend of mine lives mm. in Paris, and I said, mm. what do you make during the week? And he said, I mm. just cook what I have. Oh, my so gosh. That's how most people right. cook, right? That was so simple. Oh, that bread is that so, so yummy. That is so delicious. Okay, okay this now. next one, this is the pizza dia we've been talking about all morning. Okay. <laughs> it's like Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> pizza dia. Pizza dia. So all you okay. need is a taco that's Check. about the same size, toasted in the pan with a little bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll take it out and... Once so we definitely have tortillas in the house. We have all of these things. Yeah. yeah, you can use, if you have a bigger pan, you can use sort of a, you know, burrito size. Okay. Uh, some cheddar cheese and mm -hmm. some mozzarella. Can't beat that. Go on. Yep. This is so fun. And then we have a little marinade of some plum tomatoes or okay. great tomatoes with some uh, onions, mm. little red pepper flakes maybe. Mm -hmm. Put that on and finish That's with really some good. olives. Just your favorite Dylan, this tastes like something. Yeah. You would do for the family. And just throw this in a really hot oven, 450 mm -hmm. oven, for maybe 10 minutes until uh, the cheese melts. Well, I'm even thinking, so this you is, know, I could throw this into lunch boxes for school and everything. So it's good. just like. Maybe you could teach your kids how to do this. In this Except for the hot oven. I know, that's true. The only mm. thing you have to worry about is that skillet coming out and the handle's oh, hot. It's delicious. Yeah. So good. Yeah. You know what I like about this? These are things that we have in the house. And you know what? I have to be honest, sometimes I come home. And I'm tapped. I just mm -hmm. can't think of anything else. And they're tired of having the same old thing, but I know they like some of the similar things. So this is something that's a home. This run. is well, that, absolutely delicious. Well, that's it's why so adults, simple. when they get home, have a cocktail and peanuts. <laughs> but uh, but so we all have kids, so that's not, to that is not going to work out too much. We so. actually have to feed them. This is really so. good, Chris. Easy Thank too. you. Thank, Thank you thanks, so guys. much for these recipes. Head to today.com slash food. Healthy, easy recipes from Gabby Dawkin, creator of What's Gabby Cooking? Gabby, good morning. Thanks for uh, helping us launch this thing. Thanks. You are so welcome. Do you like the darkness outside in L.A.? It's <laughs> very early. Oh, my gosh. It's an early one. Who doesn't want to wake up and, and, and make chili? What do, you, what, do you, what do you got for us today? So we've been making all sorts of healthy recipes in January, and this is one of the most popular recipes on my website. It's a black bean sweet potato chili that even, like, a true meat lover would love. As you saw earlier, I just sauteed some onion and some mm -hmm. sweet potatoes mm -hmm. in, like, a large heavy bottom skillet. And I'm going to season it with garlic, salt, paprika, cayenne, and a little cumin, and just kind of toast that up. And then everything just goes into here. So we have black beans, we have quinoa, we have fire roasted tomatoes, and it's just going to sit on the stove and kind of simmer for mm. with a little bit of stock. Um, you could use quinoa, you could use farro, you could use barley, you could use rice, and literally it's just kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing, and I'm obsessed with it. Could you swap out the black really beans, Gabby, if you don't like black beans, could you use a different kind of bean? Mm -hmm. You could use chickpeas, you could use kidney beans, any uh, red beans, like whatever kind of beans you have, it's meat? amazing. Could you, you ask you use yeah. meat? Ask you use meat? Ask it for Yeah, ground beef. One. So, <laughs> yes, if you wanted to saute some, like, chicken or ground oh. turkey or put mm -hmm. shredded chicken in mm -hmm. before, it is no, like perfect and then extra way to add some protein. And Gabby, with, with most chilies, they're better even later. Is this mm -hmm. a good make ahead? Mm -hmm. This is one of the, so yes, this, this I actually made yesterday Yum. and it's better today than it was last night when I made it. The flavors yeah. have time to develop and I'm just going to season it with our garnish it with a little cheese, a little cilantro, some lime juice. And then if you want to get a little fancy, like you see on that photo, I like to add a little crema, which is just kind of like a watered down sour cream to give it a little extra creaminess. Mm. And it's perfection. Looks oh. yummy. What's, what's our second? You got another dish for us? Yeah, so let's talk about vegetables because I feel like so many people 
don't know how to make vegetables properly. Mm. And the key to vegetables, in my opinion, is roasting them. So yes. as you can see, mm. we've got a bunch of cauliflower. I haven't overcrowded the pan and it's super caramelized. So I just popped it into an oven, 425 degrees, let everything roast up until it's nice and golden. And then to make matters like even better, mm. I make a homemade tahini sauce. Oh, so this oh, is a little oh. tahini. I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic in there, mm -hmm. a little bit of le Meyer lemon. I mean, dip I'm in LA, why in not? Mm. Yeah, you could dip your french fries in it. Some Jeez. salt and pepper, stir it all up in this. You could put it on cauliflower, you could put it on broccoli, you could, put, I mean, I'm blanking on other vegetables right now because we're live, but <laughs> truly, oh, look at that, carrots, Bobby. you could put it on every vegetable Ooh. known to man, and it's a perfect way to make vegetables, you know, a little bit more delicious, especially for kids. Yeah, Gabi, speaking of vegetables and kids, you're self, admittedly, you ate like a seven-year-old until you were 17, right? <laughs> I have a nine-year-old, yeah. and, and ask, I'm asking this for every parent watching right now, because it's really concerning for Siri and I now that Etta literally only eats grilled cheeses and pasta, <laughs> and I wonder, like literally almost, and I'm wondering, like, when, is there anything we can do to help that along, or are we supposed to just let that happen? Let it happen, to be totally honest. And then I went to culinary school after college, and I seem to be okay. But I will say, when you make vegetables like this and you get that caramelized flavor and you tell your kids it tastes like candy, like when I was a private chef, I used to tell the kids that, and they would clear the table. Mm. So I feel like, and getting them involved in the kitchen is really nice. My daughter's one. She can't cook yet, but I can't wait till I can make her chop things. Well, you're living proof that there's hope for us yeah. all, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. I've actually so. wondered that, you know, when your kids eat no vegetables, like what happens? They but turn into world renowned chefs exactly. like Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It makes me there's, feel a lot better. There's, yeah. there's hope you. out there. There is hope. Thank Last you. Last time. I also never had seafood before I was 24, so wow. my culinary school teacher thought I was. There is hope. You're right. Crazy. That's right. It's going to be just Eating fine. Eating Nutella every morning for 20 years is fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. Gabby, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate it. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, um, yeah. I love that, too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Queen of Italian cuisine. She's also a best selling author, award winning chef, wonderful person. She makes cooking look easy, which I appreciate very much. And she's got a new book out. What number book is this, Lydia? Number 11. Number 11. Lydia's a pot, a pan, a bowl, simple recipes for perfect <laughs> meals. It is so great to have you here. It's been a tough. We're, we've missed you during the pandemic, doing the I food. I missed you. I missed you guys. It's been a couple of uh, tough years for a lot of people, especially for your family the last year. I know you lost yeah. your mother. How's everybody holding up? We're okay. We're okay. Yeah. You know, between the restaurants, the COVID, my mother. But life goes on, and we need to do some cooking. Cooking sort yeah. of heals you. It does. Uh, doesn't a, it? A lot of love family. in these dishes. Especially this, this uh, dish is... is Onion soup. Simple, straightforward. Lots oh. of onions. Okay. Cut them thick. What kind? Just white onions? Any kind of onions? W white onions. White nice onions. white onions. Mm -hmm. A little butter, a little bit of oil, and you get the... You see how nice and brown you get these I mean, onions? The smell is delicious. This is, this is... How long does it take to caramel to get to that state? Well, if you're close and you're mixing, you can speed it up a little bit. Okay. But otherwise, you know, about 10 minutes, Great. 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you add 
lots of mushrooms in here now, again. Now, is that typical for onion soup to have mushrooms? No, this is Lydia's way. This is, I thought so. <laughs> and I love mushrooms. Oh, uh, you do. Well, I thought, you know, just adding a little bit more, making it the Italian way like that, and then you move on because mm -hmm. this takes a while to okay. cook. Yeah. You get it nice and caramelized, mm. and we're going to add some salt here. Okay. Make sure you add salt. Some thyme. Mm -hmm. You want to put in the sure, thyme? I love yeah, it. go ahead. I've got the thyme. You got the thyme <laughs> to do the thyme. The wine? Yes. Go for it. Just any old white wine or like a dry white wine or? Dry. Yes, dry okay, white dry wine. wine. I'll put the stocks, uh, some pepper, mm -hmm. grind some pepper. Should I go crazy on the pepper or just a Depends little? Depends what you like. What okay. do you like? Uh, medium. So you see, this is so easy. Nobody so ever nice. makes this at home, but it's actually easy. Yeah. It's like nobody makes this mm. you think, soup. Like you it's think difficult. It's, yeah, but it's, it's not. difficult, but it's not. Once you've made it, and then you can make different days. You know, it doesn't have to be all in one day. Mm -hmm. We can do it like this individually. You let it boil, you let mm. it sort of, you like it? Mm -mm. Okay. You top it, put it in individually, oh or you can do it family style, just oh, like what that. What is the cheese on top? This is grana, and this is fontina cheese. Oh, fontina. And you put the, the toast right on top. Mm -hmm. Lydia, the mushrooms are a revelation mm -hmm. in Isn't onion soup, don't you think, Gabe? What do you guys think? Yes, Yummy. it's fantastic. It, you know, the, the, it gives it body. It, it gives really it, does. Mm -hmm. that it makes chewy. it a meal. Yes. It makes it a meal. And then if you have a nice salad mm -hmm. just like that, you see, just like this, you put it on a tray, you put it in the oven, and you just ba you're baking off the top of it. Everything's already just, cooked, yeah, right? Everything yeah. is cooked. So you can do Easy. this ahead of time oh, so when your guests oh. come. Oh, you just throw it in the oven for Throw it in the oven. Mm -hmm. Have a little salad. Again, while you have the oven going, you're going a little bit of uh, acorn squash, carrots, roast them, mm -hmm. toss them with escarole. You know, escarole mm -hmm. is a nice winter soup, mm -hmm. winter salad, mm -hmm. and dive. And you put some uh, toasted almonds, yes. some chichi beans. What kind some, of dressing do you like? Uh, that's uh, uh, balsamic vinegar mm -hmm. and oil. Okay. Simple. Mm -hmm. The squash in this just makes it. Mm. it Isn't really the squash good? Squash is delicious. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you like the cheese? The uh, the uh, the uh, ricotta salata on top. Oh yeah. 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 I'm still yeah. Yeah. Make it over oh, here. Salty's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So you know ricotta salata. Ricotta. We all love ricotta. It's sure. like curds of fresh milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know when the farmers got a lot of ricotta, they would dr dry it. Salted, yeah. and mm. it will keep longer. This is oh, such a pretty It turns salad. out into a ricotta salata, used in Italy a lot on salads, mm. on pastas, and all kinds of this stuff. Is what, is your, what is your house like at Christmas, around the Thanksgiving, around the holidays? Oh, it's wonderful. It smells wonderful. I can only oh, imagine. Tree, kids running around. They're big now, my kids. You know, they used to be small. Mm. <laughs> but, but I get the neighbor's kids. Because this, <laughs> meal, this is just like a Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Imagine mm. Thanksgiving. We'd be 400. I'm checking that Congratulations. But you see, these are all recipes in the new book. Simple, one pot, yeah, straightforward, you know, and uh, not too many pots to clean. No, exactly. Delicious, delicious. Now, this is made, I think, with chicken stock, but you can make it also vegetarian, mm. with oh, vegeta well, it vegetable is stock. Terrific. So terrific. Get your hands on yeah. Lydia's A Pot, A Pan, and A Bowl. Just head to today.com slash shop, and we're going to have her recipes for you available today.com slash food. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. And feels from the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Oh. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> 
is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You know the saying, mm. chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just We didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. I no, I'm, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup. Mm. And the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same the size, same. really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek, and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there, mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology, just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time, so it should not take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. So hey, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than an onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns oh. really brown. And I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook chicken. a chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So mm -hmm. we have a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four pound chicken, just like this. Use a tongue so you don't have to touch the chicken and just put that right in there. All right. And then another secret guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. For a second. What is that? Gelatin. Mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings and then chicken word. stock now you just cover this notice no water no salt no pepper nothing at all just chicken stock mm. you could use water but i like to get it up just a bit just jab it a bit and i put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine you don't have mm -hmm. to just a little acid now we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour once it comes out we're going to put it on a rack let it cool and then we're going to take all the delicious yes, chicken off peel it off so, you take the bones out or you yeah I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Out. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup. Our beautiful veg our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty, gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are now, you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful. Oh. Whole wheat ramen. I just oh, put that in the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Ah, uh, there's tons of it. Tons of oh. it. You can use regular. But I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're gonna Spare have some up. fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're gonna pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. Look at that. Yum. 
Ooh, ramen. I want that. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right? And then some Sprinkle chicken. Now, I choose to put the chicken mm -hmm. on oh, the chicken just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the stock. Neither do we. Yeah. And what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a pho. Dress it up. Yes. We're going to put some, some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions. Some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, ginger. Jeffrey, this is thank this you. We got to roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. NBC News. Streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups, big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Here with one of her family's favorites is cooking show host and internet star Laura Fatale of YouTube's Laura in the Kitchen. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, ladies. How are you? We're doing great. Can I tell you a true story? So this morning Tell when me. I was prepping for your segment, I read over the recipe and I was like, you know what, this is doable. So I took the notes from my desk this morning and put them in my bag oh. so that I can make this yeah. today. So here we go. So there's nothing better, obviously, enjoying soup. Let's talk about what you're making today because it's more than a soup. It's like a comfort dish. So I love the idea of like a ravioli dinner or a lasagna dinner, which, you know, it's a very rich, long cooking process that's just so soul satisfying, right? However, I find myself wanting those comfort dishes on a Tuesday evening where like time and patience is short. Um, and I really want something that's quick, easy, that my whole family is going to love because I have a very picky four-year-old um, that just that hits the spot. So this mini ravioli soup really came, the idea for it really came from a bag of mini ravioli that I got from Trader Joe's. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, they would be fantastic in a really savory sausage infused tomato broth situation. Mm. And that's kind of where the recipe came from. But it's also incredibly versatile. Like today, I'm going to be using pork sausage that I, all I did was in the, for this instance, I went ahead and just crumbled it with my carrots and my celery. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add my onions to it. You can also just slice it in little coins. A good tip there is to put your sausage in the freezer for about 10 minutes before you slice it because it's just a fatty cut of meat, so it's hard to get a nice clean cut. Uh, but you can just crumble it. If you don't like sausage but your family prefers meatballs, add some frozen mini meatballs to this. No one's going to judge. Right. Um, okay. If you're like my sister who once in a while she decides she's a vegetarian, That's that's us. Add a can of chicken. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do chicken. Yeah, my I was going to yeah, do Impossible Burger. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, or well, you could do the Impossible Burger crumbled up in here. Yep. That would be fantastic. Or like I said, a can of chickpeas. Yep. And then all I do is I just saute that with your usual aromatic suspects that go in any soup or stew. You've got carrots, you've got onion, you've got celery. Okay. To it, I'm going to add a lot of garlic because, Ooh, again, garlic. when we're talking about something that is quick cooking, easy to put together you really want to hone in on really strong bold flavors so again 
lots of garlic, lots of onions, and then it always makes everything taste like you waste. You spent so much more time yeah. um, on it than you really did. Laura, you know what, what do I you mean? do? What do you do with the broth? Because I, we wanted to do chickpeas that version, but I know she used beef mm -hmm. broth. Do we still use the broth? You know what I mean? Or what you do we do? You can use vegetable broth. You can use vegetable broth if you. If you're not a vegetarian, you can also use chicken broth if you are going to use chickpeas. But really, I really love getting, um, whenever, every time I come to the city, I will make a pit stop at Italy because they have the most fantastic Italian uh, vegetable broth cubes, mm. you know? So they're like bouillon cubes, but they're vegetarian and they are so packed with flavor and low sodium. Yeah. I love them. And sometimes I'll just boil that for my daughter with a little bit of pastina and some chicken and she loves it, it's a lot of parm. So I like to keep it as easy as possible, especially when it's just, you know, it's cold, it's miserable, and you're working <laughs> from home, and you have the kids. Right, and you want it quick. Who was that? <laughs> How long do you let it simmer for, and what is that that you're cutting? So what I'm cutting off right now is the rind of some Parmesan, right? Mm. So oh. the rind has incredible flavor, and all I'm going to do, now that I'm going to add my tomato sauce and my beef stock, I'm going to add this alongside so that it infuses all of my soup with this lovely salty parmesan Ooh. cheesy flavor that it is it makes or breaks a soup for me <laughs> um it's my favorite but once you have all of your aromatics and your sausage looking really good i'm gonna go ahead and add some tomato pots i always have a uh, marinara sauce on hand because because i do sure. <laughs> um because I don't think any Italian doesn't. So I just <laughs> use a couple of cups of leftover marinara sauce, but this works great with like crushed tomatoes or open up a can of diced tomatoes. Um, it's really no fuss at all. And then you're gonna add your beef stock. Now, oh, if good. you're adding beef stock, chicken stock, whatever you're adding, just make sure it's a good quality. Because again, if you're using few ingredients in something that cooks kind of quickly, you just wanna make sure you're using the best quality ingredients you can. Then you take your Parmesan rind and you bury it in there. I like to go with a little Italian seasoning. If you don't have it, all it is is just some dried parsley, this looks basil. So, so amazing. Good. We're gonna put the full recipe yeah. online, Laura. But and the good yeah. news is, if you don't have ravioli and you just have pasta in your just closet, you could pasta. put that in too. So looks thank so you. If you don't tonight, have, you I know. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Second. I'll post it. <laughs> If you don't have ravioli, you can go ahead and just use rice or pasta or anything like that. It doesn't have to be mini ravioli. Okay. It can be tortellini. Looks but amazing. Look, it looks that comes amazing. To a boil, That's it. Once That's you come it. to Laura, a boil, you just we're let running it out of time. Boil. Thank you so <laughs> much. We'll put everything out. online. It looks good. To get this recipe, go to today.com slash food. Welcome to today all day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, Ambush Makeover. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
2022, another year of climate and weather chaos around the world. Records shattered in extreme heat, drenching rains, heavy snow, and devastating droughts. Lives upended and forever changed in one in 1,000 year events. But it was also a year of action. The government passing historic legislation to help combat climate change and make for a more resilient nation. As we look ahead to 2023, there's hope on the horizon through mobilization, innovation, and a global sense of urgency. Hey everyone, I'm Jacob Soboroff. This year's climate headlines spanned from hope to tragedy. The United States invested more money than ever before to address the crisis. Sweeping legislation made planning and paying for a greener future possible. A new spotlight shone on renewable energy in the wake of the war in Ukraine. But climate experts warn global progress has been slow as governments around the world face looming energy and financial crises. With tomorrow's climate already here today, the countdown clock is picking up speed. Some of this year's extraordinary weather events were supercharged by climate change. NBC News meteorologist Dylan Dreyer takes us through the extremes of 2022. 2022, a violent year of climate and weather extremes. From heat waves and drought to catastrophic flooding and hurricanes, the impacts reverberating around the globe. So far this year, $15 billion weather disasters hit the U.S., according to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the final count yet to be tallied. The first billion-dollar disaster came in the spring when warmer temperatures fueled three deadly tornado outbreaks in as many weeks, run, run, run! spawning more than 200 reported tornadoes across more than a dozen states. It's very devastating when you, you know, like it's all your hard work is just going up in the air. In the West, sections of Yellowstone National Park were devastated by destructive flash floods. Roads were washed away and the park closed to the public for the first time in three decades. Climate change causing the atmosphere to be warmer and wetter, making conditions ripe for these types of events. It was very surprising how quickly it came. This summer was a story of extremes. Europe had its most intense heat wave in recorded history. London set a historic all-time high of 104 degrees. Back in the U.S., six 1,000-year floods occurred in the span of five weeks in July and August. Places like St. Louis, Dallas, and eastern Kentucky deluged with 8 to 15 inches of rain in just 24 hours. Death Valley received its entire year's worth of rain in just three hours. The footprint of climate change leaving its mark across nearly the entire U.S. Parts of the West baked in the most severe heat ever recorded in the month of September. I've never dealt with something this hot before. Nearly 300 weather stations hitting their hottest temperatures in places like Salt Lake City, Reno and Sacramento. Meanwhile, already extreme drought conditions in the region worsened. Lake Mead's water level plunged to its lowest yet the Bureau of Reclamation declaring a tier two water shortage for the first time ever, hoping to avert a water crisis. After a slow start to the hurricane season, Category 4 Ian roared ashore southwest Florida with winds topping 150 miles per hour, tying for the fifth strongest hurricane ever to strike the United States. Neighborhoods in Fort Myers and Naples left in ruin. Warmer waters are acting as jet fuel, causing the storms to rapidly intensify. Just as the season was coming to a close, Category 1 Nicole became the first November hurricane to make landfall in nearly 40 years. Scientists attribute this to warmer sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, this year running up to three and a half degrees above average. Nicole is the nail in the coffin for Daytona Beach Shores. Ian came in and did all this damage, and now Nicole is just putting us away. In upstate New York, winter arrived early when a massive November snowstorm rewrote the history books, burying neighborhoods and even the Buffalo Bills Stadium under 80 inches of snow. There's nothing in the storm. Here you, got there. you can't get a loaf of bread or anything. With eerie similarity to last year, a series of deadly cool season tornadoes ripped through the south. More than 100 reported over two weeks across seven states between Thanksgiving and Christmas. This my house right here, y'all. My house is just gone. 
The December twister is part of a massive week-long cross-country storm that dropped four feet of snow in the west, brought blinding blizzard conditions to the upper Midwest, and dozens of tornadoes to the south. Then, a historic and deadly bomb cyclone crippled half the country over the holidays, bringing with it plummeting temperatures, blizzard conditions lasting nearly 40 hours, and 50 inches of snow. The storm pushed the city of Buffalo into the record books. It's the city's snowiest start to the season ever, at least 100 inches and counting. Dylan Dreyer reporting on the brutal weather of this past year. We know the climate crisis can feel incredibly heavy, sometimes even hopeless. That's why we want to pivot now and talk about climate anxiety and mental health. According to Dr. Stephanie Collier from the Harvard Medical School, climate anxiety, it's also called eco-anxiety, is something that can be daunting for people of all generations, but particularly younger ones. It's a feeling described as being worried, or nervous or scared of the consequences of climate change and what the future holds for our planet. It's a real thing and it's been on the rise over the past several years, so if you're feeling overwhelmed, you are definitely not alone. Here are a few helpful ways to deal with that anxiety. Find a community and talk to others about how your climate anxiety makes you feel. Spend time in nature, take in the beauty that this planet has to offer and be present in the moment. You can take breaks from doom scrolling about climate change or watching too much news. And you know what? It might even be good to welcome a bit of climate anxiety because it often leads to more conversation, which can result in more action and more change. I sat down with Saad Amer to talk about this emotionally charged subject and how younger generations view where we are in the fight against climate change. Saad rose up as an activist and is now a consultant for the United Nations and founder of Justice Environment. I think a major concern to come out of this year when you hear young people talk about the climate crisis, it's not necessarily about air, water, animals. It's about our own anxiety, our own climate anxiety and protecting our own mental health. What do you make of this becoming such a concern of young people in America? I mean, if we look across America, mental health is not taken care of in any substantial way. We see young people in particular experiencing high rates of depression, anxiety, and all sorts of other mental health issues. So it's not a surprise that there's a connection between the climate crisis and these mental health issues. But on top of that, I mean, the climate crisis is a major existential issue. We see that there are floods, wildfires, droughts happening all across the country, and we know they're going to continue to happen. When you see a report from the United Nations that says, Climate change, as we know it today, might not be reversible. What do you think? The United Nations is ringing every single alarm bell. We see the Secretary General, the head of the United Nations, calling this code red for humanity in a recent major report. And when you see the leaders of the entire world stating how clearly that this is going to impact us, it's insane that we're not taking stricter action, faster action on this crisis. And as these reports grow more dire, you would expect to see the political reality across the world grow more intense. But instead, it seems like people are just kicking the can down the road and hoping somebody else takes care of it. I think a lot of people look at young people and they say, oh, you give me so much hope for the future. And that's nice. I'm glad you feel more hopeful. I would rather you actually did something. You're constantly connecting with different climate activists all over the, not just the country, but all over the world. What do you feel like has gotten done in the last year uh, that's worth reflecting on and worth celebrating? First of all, the fact that this interview is really happening. I mean, we see that young people have demanded that people pay more attention to these issues, bring it to the forefront, and highlighted it consistently. And I think young people also put environmental justice on the map in an incredibly meaningful way. What's the state of the fight for environmental justice in the United States? I mean, the climate crisis is an intersectional issue. It is a health issue, it is a human rights issue, it is a water issue, it is an air issue, it is a jobs issue. And whether you like it or not, these implications of the climate crisis are impacting young people and people of color the most intensely. Are you worried about the fact that the Democrats are not going to control the House of Representatives uh, in the next Congress when it comes to passing legislation designed to protect the climate? 
I mean, look, I would love if climate champions were all up and down all over our Congress, and that just is not our political reality right now. However, Democrats were recently able to pass the Inflation Reduction Act, the single largest, biggest investment in this country in climate infrastructure ever. What do you hope to see happen next year as we move forward and as the fight continues? We need to install more judges who care about the climate crisis. I think our courts have consistently been a pathway where we could see major changes in environmental regulations, but instead we consistently see them shut down as major corporations invest in expensive fancy lawyers that activists can't fight. Coming up, putting policy into action. We are facing a climate crisis, yes. We're in crisis mode, we're in crisis response mode. How the Biden administration is implementing a history-making measure to fight climate change. My conversation with EPA Administrator Michael Regan is next. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love <laughs> you too. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Welcome back to Our Planet's Future, Combating Climate Change. Rising temperatures are not just a threat to natural resources across the planet, but also critical to infrastructure that's essential to our daily lives. Stronger storms are happening more frequently, and they're stressing our fragile electric grid, sometimes leaving people without power when they need it the most. That's why more towns and private businesses, even parts of the military, are turning to a new resource to keep the lights on after disaster strikes. The U.S. energy grid being pushed to the brink by more intense weather and climate events. We're almost guaranteeing that the grid is going to go down in some respects. Every source of power that the state of Texas has, has been compromised. Now, new technology known as microgrids are offering a more stable and sustainable solution to keep the power on while keeping up with today's climate challenges. Microgrids are kind of an interesting opportunity, I think, to, uh, to visualize um, reforming a, a grid and control of energy at the grid edge. So closer to the consumer, we're bringing control back to the consumer. Microgrids powered by renewables act as a small scale electrical energy grid that can operate freely from traditional grids. It decouples you from some of the contingencies that may be external that you don't control. According to the Department of Energy, there are only about 160 operational microgrid installations around the US. That number though is expected to boom in the coming years largely in part due to major investments by the U.S. included in the Inflation Reduction Act, billions of dollars to expand the use of microgrids, and major tax credits for manufacturers. If you go back to the 1929, you could always help your neighbor out by bringing them a quart of wood or you know, a gallon of kerosene, but you could never bring them a gallon of electrons, right? You can't bring them electricity. Microgrids now making that a possibility. In Tampa, Florida, a first-of-its-kind neighborhood is looking to prove those neighborly benefits in partnership with the local utility company. 37 homes, all equipped with solar panels and energy storage, working together to feed a microgrid. Michelle Johnson recently moved into one of them. They said, you'll be on the microgrid, and I said, 
what is a microgrid? The whole process is, is simply a solar panel that can convert the energy from the sun into electrons and an energy processor like the Block Energy block box here that can take that energy, send it to your home, send it to a battery, share it with your neighbors, share it with the grid in a way that's efficient and effective. The recent Hurricane Ian testing the resilience of this system. It was no issue at all. We didn't lose any power. We felt very secure being here with the microgrids and the solar panels. We had neighbors down the street who did not have this system and they did lose power. Now, she says it's something she can't live without. I would never move into a home that does not have it. I would look around for it, yes. Because it's safety, it's security. It's common sense to me. In August, President Biden signed a bill into law that included more than $375 billion to fight climate change over the next decade. It's the federal government's biggest investment ever to fight what the EPA administrator calls a climate crisis. We recently sat down with him to talk about turning that legislation into results and whether the parties can find common ground when Republicans take over the House in January. When it comes to the climate, what is the most urgent threat facing the United States today? I think this country is seeing the full breadth of the threats from climate change and the climate crisis. And that's why the president has deemed this uh, an area of focus that we are laser focused on. Every single cabinet is focused on climate change and the impacts of climate change. $370 billion in the Inflation Reduction Act alone to combat climate change. When, how, and where will Americans see that money put to use? They'll see a reduction in their energy bills because of the push forward in technologies that will reduce the climate change impacts. While leveraging tax credits, Americans will see lower costs on electric vehicles. And you're gonna see jobs created and you're gonna see America really thrive on the global stage. When you see what happened in Jackson with residents, primarily people of color, not having access to safe drinking water, this is not the first time this has happened uh, in the United States of America. How do you understand what's happening there and why it continues to happen? Well, you know, we've seen these systemic failures all over the country. And unfortunately, they are our communities of color, our black and brown communities, our tribal communities, low income communities. Some of our poorest communities we see have uh, faced indifference uh, a lack of investment in infrastructure. And so that's why the bipartisan infrastructure uh, law is so important. $50 billion uh, given to EPA to focus on investing in water infrastructure all over this country. And more than 50% of those resources will go specifically to the disadvantaged communities that have faced these troubles for far too long. You and the EPA have tightened emission standards uh, on automobiles. And by 2026, it's uh, gonna be 40 miles per gallon, if I'm not mistaken. First of all, is that feasible, number one? And number two, what will the results be uh, if indeed uh, those standards are met? You know, we, we, we know that they are feasible uh, because our technology standards are designed uh, based on cost benefits and feasibility. So we believe that not only will this country hit those targets, but could potentially exceed those targets. You'll see ex record levels of carbon pollution reduced to reduce global warming. Obviously, you can't reduce emission standards without uh, the support of the private sector and the automobile uh, industry. Do you anticipate that as you go for forward beyond 2026, 2027, 2028, uh, the automobile companies are gonna stay with you? I do, and, and as I'm having conversations uh, with the private sector, uh, there is a lot of capital on the sideline that now has the confidence to come off of the sideline because of the massive investments you're seeing from the federal government. We are having a good conversation about real, true public-private partnerships that create jobs and keep this country globally competitive. Come January, uh, the Democrats are not gonna control the House of Representatives. What type of meaningful legislative action uh, can be taken uh, during the next Congress in order to protect the climate? You know, I'm excited to say that we have a lot of meaningful legislation that has happened over the past two years, and now we need to implement and execute on these billions of dollars that we've been given to help restore communities, to help fight the climate crisis. And so we're excited about the legislation that has occurred. I believe, uh, and, and this president has proven, uh, that he has the ability to work across the aisle. What can you get done? What are your goals for the next two years of the Biden administration? You know, my goals are to really focus on continuing the great work we've done 
to reduce these pollutants that are causing or exacerbating climate change. Uh, we have already tackled hydrofluorocarbons, highly potent greenhouse gas emission, going to reduce that by 85 uh, percent. Uh, methane emissions, we're tackling that from the oil and gas sector. We're targeting 87 percent reductions by 2005 levels. But then we also have another set of technology standards focused on cars and trucks. And finally, we're going to uh, push a regulation and technology standards that focus on the power sector, our coal plants and our you know, oil and gas sector and natural gas sector. There's been a big effort to shut down these uh, coal-fired super polluting, so-called super polluting uh, power plants. How much longer are those types of plants going to remain open in the United States? You know, the, the market has been acting for the past you know, decade, um, looking at what technologies are more suitable in this country to generate energy. Up next, harnessing social power to save the planet. How a group of online influencers teamed up to create a massive ocean cleanup campaign. Plus, adapting to the climate crisis. How engineers are using nature and technology to stormproof a coastal Air Force base destroyed after Hurricane Michael. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This year had no shortage of climate stories to cover. And although the extreme weather events and the politics around climate change are important to cover, here at NBC News, we always try to put a spotlight on unique ways people are finding solutions to this crisis. So we want to show you two of those stories, one that highlights the power of social media and the common want to do better for our Earth. And the other story is about resilience and rebuilding after tragedy as a matter of national security. Take a look. Currently surrounded by countless sharks. I'm going to count to 100. Go high. <laughs> oh! Jimmy Donaldson, a.k.a. Mr. Beast, and Mark Rober are two of the biggest YouTubers, currently with more than 100 million subscribers combined. They've racked up views and millions of dollars by playing pranks, doing science experiments, and breaking world records. Now the pair have harnessed their social power for a purpose. The goal of Team Seas is to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the ocean. Probably the craziest thing we've ever attempted. The idea came after the duo had success with what they called Team Trees. 2,600 trees are being planted every single day with TeamTrees.org. Planting more than 20 million trees over the last two years, and now turning their attention to our beaches. The idea here was to crowdsource the biggest ocean cleanup ever. And you went about it first by sort of targeting other influencers to kind of get them on Team C. We made like a video, a pitch video, one minute, really tight. It doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you direct your viewers to teamseas.org and let them know that one dollar means one less pound of trash in the freaking ocean. And I feel like almost everyone said yes in some capacity. Go Team Seas! Let's do this. Let's go Team Seas! The campaign was an immediate success, raising more than $30 million in less than two months. The influencers then worked alongside nonprofit organizations who've been doing this for decades to take action, and we got to tag along. 
So here in, in Gringo Beach, Haina, and we're expecting around 300 volunteers. Team C's partner, Ocean Conservancy, focuses their efforts on shorelines around the globe. And as their senior director, Nick Malice, told us, this beach in the town of Haina, Dominican Republic, is one of the most polluted on the planet. 11 million metric tons of plastics enters the ocean every year. And that's more than a garbage truck worth of plastics every minute. And so the result is these items wash out into rivers, out into the ocean, and unfortunately end up on beautiful beaches like this around the world. How cool is it to be part of the largest crowdsourced cleanup of the ocean and beaches? Uh, it's pretty freaking awesome. We have many people in the ocean conservation community say, I've been trying for 20 years to get my kid to care about what I do, and Mr. Beast and Mark put out one tweet, and all of a sudden I gotta empty my piggy bank to contribute. So it's been truly transformative. Emmy Oviedo is a volunteer and an avid Mr. Beast fan. It's really like amazing how two people can make a big difference of like how you see like trash in the beaches, how dirty they are. You think they can make a big difference? They can make a difference. The real power behind Team Seas and Team Trees isn't that it's like you have some really rich person coming and donating all this money. It's that you've got kids who are literally giving like a dollar. And to them, like, that now becomes part of who they are. And when they are at the beach or wherever and they see litter, they're like, I don't think so, man. I am on Team Seas. That's not who I am. And week by week, that team is working together to achieve that goal of removing 30 million pounds of waste. Feels got, heavy. There it is. We got 26 pounds. And again, wow. it's remember that is just plastic. Just in bottles. Just bottles. So what is next? Team Trees, Team Seas. Where are we headed? Maybe Team Breeze? I don't know, something with the wind? I'm not sure what's next, uh, but, there, but I could say there will be a next. A vital U.S. Air Force base flattened by Hurricane Michael in 2018. Tyndall has been kind of the heart of air dominance, is uh, how we term it in, in the Air Force. We lost about uh, 484 facilities and over 800 homes just on base alone. Now, Tyndall's mission is to envision, rebuild, and prevail, creating a first-of-its-kind military base that directly considers resiliency against climate change. You're paying particular attention in the rebuild to the impact of, of weather and climate in general, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we're building up our infrastructure uh, in many ways to be resilient to future type storms. But we're also setting new standards as we rebuild. Higher standards that ensure buildings can withstand a Category 5 hurricane and are protected against more intense flooding. We're trying to be innovative. We're trying a lot of new projects. Some of them will be successful and will carry over to uh, how we build Air Force bases in the future. Defense now coming from oyster reefs and sand dunes along the 129 miles of coastline bolstered by the base and its resources. So the sea oats that you see right here really are, are the kind of the glue that holds these dunes together. Having these dunes built up provides a natural barrier uh, against that storm surge, against that flood, and that protects the base that sits on the other side. It's critical to the defense of the United States. And a modest investment here saves us big cost uh, potentially in the future. The base, opened in 1941, has had its share of typical environmental issues. It was officially labeled a Superfund site in 1997 after issues with DDT and other chemicals were identified. NBC News reached out to the EPA and it declined to comment. For the base rebuild, the Department of Defense asked Air Force engineers to create brand new technology to further protect the base, using virtual and augmented reality to allow engineers to prepare for future challenges. We're able to run a Category 5 through the base and see what kind of damage is going to be done before. We'll start walking through. When the next Category 5 or the next storm comes, we can now look and see exactly, okay, here's maybe a break. I need to reinforce the facility here. The new Tyndall base is estimated to cost around $5 billion and will be completed near 2026. Do you hope that what you're doing at Tyndall becomes a model for other military installations to be more sustainable, to be more resilient? Yeah, I certainly hope that, you know, what we do here and what we learn here can be scaled and can be shared. Thanks to Savannah Sellers, Aaron Gilchrist, and the Climate Unit for that reporting. As we look back on the year, it's also worth looking ahead to the next. Although global carbon emissions are set to hit an all-time high in 2023, according to the International Energy Agency, there's plenty of progress on the way to curb climate change. There are 22 states and the District of Columbia targeting 100% renewable energy 
or 100% carbon-free electricity. There's more wind, solar, and hydropower projects that'll be in production than ever before. One of the largest is a wind farm off the coast of Spain. What can you do to help fight the climate crisis? Keep the dialogue going. Talk to your friends and family about the ways you want to see the world change and help the planet. Reduce your carbon footprint by buying local and purchase more sustainable items. And most of all, don't lose hope in the fight. For Today Climate and NBC News Now, I'm Jacob Soboroff. Thanks for watching. I love the city of Baltimore. I've been coming here for years. And if there's one thing I know, the city of Baltimore is serious about his crap. I love Baltimore crabs. This is the, the, the stomping vine of crabs. And I've been eating crabs since the time I could sit up at a table. It's a little spicy, salty, and savory, all in one. If I could describe the taste, you can't. You just have to try it. <laughs> you just have to try it. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. When you think Maryland, you got to think Blue Crab, an essential part of the state's culture and cuisine. And no place knows how to cook it up quite like Baltimore. I mean, just as many ways as you can count, you can find ways to eat crab. Of course, there's your basic, your, your steamed crab with the beautiful spices and you just start whacking that bad boy and get all that beautiful meat out. You can get cra canned crab if you'd like. Uh, of course, there's also the fabulous crab mac and cheese with a hot dog. There's the crab dip, there's your crab soup, and of course, the king of crab, the crab cake. Yes, but this is a cake that needs no icing. Crab cakes have been enjoyed by many for centuries throughout the Chesapeake region. But here in Baltimore, they're a way of life. And one of the city's most popular go-tos is tucked away just inside the world-famous Lexington Market. We're headed back to Houston today and we wanted to have the best crab cake in town. We're from Orlando, glad to be here. People have been coming to Fabies for years. Yes. Ever since I was little and I'm um, 25. <laughs> People from all around the world come here to Baltimore just to grab a bite of the famous Fadley's Crab Cake. It's made with fresh Maryland crab and family love. Everybody looks the same. How are you, my dear? Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> so Good to see you. How are you, sir? You looking good? You're looking great. Got something for you. All right. There you go. There you go. You need one of those. Oh, yeah. There you are. Now I'm feeling really crabby. Pardon me. I've, I've got to get a lawyer because there's a clause I have to have checked. <laughs> I've known the folks at Fadley's Seafood for years, but they've been serving up fresh crab cakes even longer. Hi, I'm uh, Nancy Fadley Devine. I own Fadley Seafood. It's been uh, in my family now for, well, four generations, and the fifth is coming up, so we've been around a long time. I think people are astonished to see my parents at 84 and 89 still working. You can get another five pants and do a second batch if you need to with them. People ask her for her autograph, they ask her for her picture, they ask her to hold their babies. You know, it's, it's, it's really fun. I mean, here's this company that's been part of Baltimore for over 130 years. Yeah, right. Uh, what, why, what, what is it about your place that has people coming back? Right. I think it's that people come in here and go right away. There's a warmth. 
Uh -huh. There, it's like walking to somebody's home. That's they're they're happy to have you. Uh -huh. You know, come and you feel. Oh my gosh, I feel at home. And I get people. We were here 20 years. It's exactly the same. In fact, Fadley still stands in its original location, founded here by John W. Fadley Sr. in 1886. Started off as a seafood stall, but over the generations grew into a Baltimore tradition, led by Bill and Nancy Devine, along with their daughter. Damie Hahn, and I am the fourth generation of Fadley's, so I do everything. <laughs> Give them a little bit of a smorgasbord of, of everything. Going over here to fillet a fish, over here to shuck an oyster, over there to steam a crab, back here to fry, up here to make a crab cake, back down on the phone, running in the shipping department. A tray like that is about, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bushels of crabs in order to get that tray. That's a lot of picking, and I don't think people realize how much work goes into getting an all jumbo lump. Growing up, did you did you think you were going to end up here? You were going to be doing this? No, <laughs> no. But it was hard to get away from, and I couldn't see it going away. I couldn't see see it ending with my parents. So the pandemic hit. Yes. You really had to step up. My father called me and I said, Dad, you guys cannot come in here. You know, the, we, we don't know anything about this this virus and, and the effects, especially on the elderly. And I know you want to be here, but you can't. And he said, Damien, do whatever you do, whatever you can to make payroll. It just makes me cry when I think about it. Um, he said, just make sure that we don't have to lay anybody off. I don't want to lay anybody off. I don't want anybody to lose their job. And we did it. And I saw it back when I came here in the 90s and I still see it today. This truly is a family. Oh, it is a family. <laughs> and, it, and it's funny because I often tell people, mom and dad don't treat the employees any differently than they treat me. And that's the God's which honest good, truth. <laughs> which could be a good or a bad. <laughs> that's the God's honest truth. And that's why you end up having so many multi-generation families staying here. That's right. Fadley's isn't just a family-owned business. It's run by family as well. Multiple generations of employees, father and daughter, father and son, mom and daughter, all building a home here. I've been here since a junior in high school, so I've been doing the thing for a while. I'm gonna say it's been around 33, 34 years. And I started at the end of 79, a uh, week before my son was born. I started at 14 years old, and I'll be 42 years old in December. It's always a challenge working with family. <laughs> a lot of personalities, but you love each other and it always works, you know, it always works well. What's, what's really, really bad is when your kids are grandmothers. Well, we were in the middle of an interview. <laughs> oh, you just broke in. <laughs> you have to start over? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you were saying about the challenges of working with family? <laughs> Just a few of them, you know? Just a few. While the family spirit makes customers feel at home, it's Fadley's crab cakes that keep them coming back. What kind of oil do you cook your crab cakes in? Soybean. Soybean, thank you. So excited to have the crab cakes. And I watch people for the first time put it in their mouth and they go, oh my God. <laughs> and, I go, and they're standing at a table in a market. Yeah. They're not sitting down to a white tablecloth and having somebody serve it on a silver platter. It's on a paper plate, but it's it belongs on a silver platter. Nancy created a recipe in 1987, saying she's never changed it. So, besides yourself, how many other people know the Fadley's crab cake recipe? Sleep with her, she won't tell me. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> Why would I tell him? <laughs> so some people use breadcrumbs. You use it's crushed broken up salty. Salty. Broken salty, yes. And not, not fine because no. you have to use more. Now, so, and then this is the magic sauce. Is this the secret sauce? Yes. So it's just enough to mix the ingredients it's together, right. nothing more. That's right. And the fine. big and ball of crab right there. That's it. Boom.
look at this. Oh boy. Oh. It's just like I remember eating it 26 years ago. You know what? I'm told that all the time when people come in here. The best part about this is you haven't changed a thing. Now this is a legacy. Well, we know how the crabs end up, but how do they get them? Let's go find out. Coming up, the generations of black watermen who've made a living pulling in Maryland's most famous catch. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Chesapeake Bay men and women who work these waters are probably just as famous as the legendary catch that they pull out. And in fact, it's backbreaking work that is passed on from generation to generation, including blackjacks. Those were the black watermen who worked these waters all the way back into the 1800s and are a vital part of this community. The Chesapeake Bay is home to a vast variety of seafood, but none as valuable or as well known as the blue crab. The catch here makes up over a third of the nation's supply, and on average, more than 50 million pounds of blue crabs are harvested from the bay. I'm Captain Tyrone Meredith, charter boat captain, owner and operator of the Island Queen 2. Captain Meredith knows these waters well, he grew up on them. I'm the fourth generation uh, waterman, and my grand, great grandfather, he worked on the water, my grandfather, and my father. We've been here ever since the 1860s, making a living working on the Chesapeake Bay. This has been the way of life for generations of watermen here in Kent Narrows, a town just 50 miles south of Baltimore. For hundreds of years, they've caught, processed, and sold blue crabs to markets up and down the eastern shore. By the mid to late 1800s, Kent Narrows had also become one of many unlikely havens on the bay for free and enslaved African Americans. There's more black uh, watermen anywhere on the whole east coast, probably in the United States. Those watermen, also known as blackjacks, forged their path to liberation on the water. Their expertise is essential to the booming seafood industry. So much so, the government granted some black watermen seamen's protection certificates, providing sailors with American citizenship and a path to economic freedom. Hey, Lewis, I'm coming up on you now. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Howdy, bike in the day. This morning it looked pretty good. Well, being out here is your own boss. You do what you want to do and have nobody tell you, go get me this or go get me that. 75-year-old Lewis Carter still finds that same sense of freedom on the water today. He's also one of the last generations of black watermen alive. Every morning before the sun rises, he sets out to catch crabs in the bay. I started in 1961, now I'll be 15, and I've been at it ever since. Right now, uh, I'm going down the line, and I, when I get to the other end, I'll throw it off. Crabs will come up on that bait. The pressure from the water pushes them back in this dipper. Okay, these are the big, large males. You put them in one basket. That's a female with red claws. Put them in one basket. He's one of the last Mohegans left. Not too many people that still work, make a living from the water. Most of them moved away, got all the jobs, and it's changing because it's harder to make a living from the bay. Crabbing season runs from spring into late fall, but changes in climate, cost, and labor have made each successive year more challenging. As younger generations take up new trades, there are less people working the waters and ultimately fewer black watermen. Back when I started, it was a plenty of black water, but they died out and the younger ones never taken their place. It, in, a, in one way, it makes me feel bad, you know, and I don't think it'll be no chance to be a black water. I really do believe that. Captain Meredith estimates there are fewer than a dozen black watermen on the bay. Like many of his peers, he's had to turn to other work. Back when I was crabbing teenager, I caught high as 50 bushel a day. Right now, crab is catching two or three bushel a day. Now I started running charters, fishing charters, because crabbing started declining and, and the fishing was more lucrative money-wise. And educational. His charters are an opportunity to keep stories of the blackjacks alive for generations ahead. Although tradition on these waters is changing, one thing remains the same. Nothing tastes like the Chesapeake Bay Maryland crab. It's got that certain taste to them. And it, it, it's the only place like that in the world is the Chesapeake Bay Blue Crab. Next, an up and coming Baltimore chef inspired by his family's love of cooking. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jen doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free. Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? 
whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Back in Baltimore, a new generation is putting a spin on the crab cake. So I'm Alex Perez. I'm the owner of Poppy Cuisine. I'm an artist at heart. So uh, cooking, um, the arts of culinary, you know, that's something that I'm very passionate about. Not necessarily having a recipe to go off of and just getting in the kitchen, freestyling and coming up with a masterpiece. It's that freestyling approach that brings people through these doors, clamoring for a taste. Jumbo, crab, crab is king in Baltimore, so um, you're going to see crab cakes, uh, crab cake fries, crab cake egg rolls. Everyone's been going crazy over it as well. This is the ball. So I just come back to that and I enjoy it every time I come here. We actually live in D.C., so we rode all the way up here an hour just to come here. Right now I'm drizzling our warhead and our aioli sauces on it. I have a family from the Dominican Republic. I'm Afro-Latino. I'm black on my mother's side. And pretty much I just always had a love for food and uh, cooking food, eating food. So learning how to cook from my, my dad. So my dad taught me how to cook at the age of 10. I grew up, you know, watched my grandmother cook a, a lot as well. So I started pretty much combining the uh, foods that I learned to cook from my grandmother with the foods I learned how to cook from my father. And that's kind of like how the uh, whole poppy cuisine, you know, was, was born it's in her kitchen, essentially. That was eight years ago. While working a full-time job, Alex began building a new business on the side, catering food out of his grandma's kitchen. In February 2020, he was finally able to open a restaurant. Then the pandemic hit. Of course, you know, a month later, we get the news that we have to shut down and only do takeout. So that just opened up the, uh, the, the floodgates, essentially. And you have people standing in line hundreds of people <laughs> on the block and in that mass, you know, cars double parked up and down the streets. And it was, it was just may, it was mayhem. During a global crisis, the city Alex was born and raised in rallied around him. Now, Poppy Cuisine is packed with locals and tourists alike. But the chef stays true to his roots, running it with close family and friends. My little sister, Natasha. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Natasha. My big bro, Alex. I can employ family members, friends, and so forth, you know, that uh, people who I grew up with, people that I'm close to. It's very rewarding, you know? Coming up, I'm going to grab my apron and join Alex and Grandma Gloria for a lesson in cooking crap. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. I wanted to meet Alex and his grandma Gloria, the inspiration behind his cooking. So I dropped by their kitchen to say hello. Well, I know I picked up from 
my grandmother, my mother-in-law, and um, just put my own spin on certain dishes. I didn't follow it to the, the recipe to the letter. So you're able to add a little bit. Yeah, but he's always asked me uh, when I fix a dish, well, what did you put in this? How did you do, how did you do this? And I would tell him, I said, you don't have to follow to the letter, you know, put your own spin. And Alex has done just that, turning the classic crab cake into an egg roll. Genius! The ingredients, simple. A pound of jumbo lump crab, panko breadcrumbs, aged cheddar cheese, egg roll wrappers, and a couple of sauces and microgreens to top it off. There's the star of the show, the crab meat. Put on an apron, I've got rubber gloves on. All right. <laughs> Patient's ready. So how do we get started, Alex? Yeah, so first what you want to do is say we have some uh, Maryland jumbo lump crab here. Uh -huh. So for the most part, it shouldn't have much shells in, but mm -hmm. uh, typically uh, I like to sift through it. Just got to see if there's any shells, and if so, you can put the shells right back in this oh. uh, container. There you go. So Gloria, did you know you were ra helping raise a, a culinary genius? <laughs> well, no, but I know he liked to eat. <laughs> <laughs> This sauce particular is our, our crab sauce mix. So we're going to drizzle a little bit at a time. I don't want to put too much, right. just enough to uh, bind. You got enough for Al? Yep, I think I'll have enough. Oh, she's, she's stay by me. I like this. I like this lady. This is why I'm so particular uh, about, you know, when I'm doing things in the kitchen. Uh huh. Start actually rolling these things up. Yes. Why? Why? Why do you think this this recipe is, is so popular at the restaurant? The most popular. Um, well, I think uh, because it, it pretty much gives you the ability to uh, take a a bar more favorite and you know make it handheld and on on the go. Uh -huh. You know, it's throwing your hand. Kind of and eat. Food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons. It's it's very popular. Other than the taste as well. Right. Well, exactly. You know. <laughs> Yeah, because that's, that's You can take taste. it with you, but if it's not great, right, right, exactly. you can uh, come back for it. Yeah, so what we're going to um, do is uh, we're going to take like a, a pinch of uh, crab. It's around like a, a quarter cup or so. Mm -hmm. We're going to sit in the middle. Is that too yep. much? Yeah, mm -hmm. we want to take a little bit out, a little pinch out. Actually, we want to put a little bit more in. Yeah. Which is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's perfect right there. That's perfect, right, perfect. <laughs> And we're gonna Just literally fold them up envelope style. What, what is it about cooking and family that, that, that is so important? Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, you know, living a, a busy life as a business owner and a dad, a husband, things like that, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, food is a uh, opportunity for family to come together, you know, talk about things, especially if you haven't seen each other in a long time. And mm -hmm. You know, it's a way for us to connect, so. Hey, Lord, is, it, is it true you've never done this before? No, I haven't. It's true. Oh. Could have fooled me that you never did this before. Look at that. <laughs> Bam! You done! Faster than what I did. Wow! <laughs> wow! That natural grandma thing. Love it. So now we're going get, to get the deep fryer up here and fry these yeah. bad boys up. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Woo! You had to describe the heart of your cuisine. What is it, and, and how does Baltimore uh, kind of part of that? Pretty much my, my story, and I think that connects very well to our Baltimore, you know, because, you know, I, I grew up here, you know, all my life, and I think everything that um, I faced during the time that, you know, I, I started this company up until now, I've been transparent about that, and it resonated very well with the uh, the, uh, the people in Baltimore, and they, they watched my journey through the years, and I feel like that's that's really the, the heart of what mm -hmm. I do. Make sure and they it's crisp around the edges and then things like that, so that's why I keep turning them, you know, so it doesn't uh -huh. fry on one particular side too much, and just want to even fry. Ooh. Nice and golden. So you want to cut these diagonally, so I'm going to drizzle. This is our aioli sauce, house made, and this is our warhead sauce right here. <laughs> so the sauce is kind of sweet, has a tangy bite to it. Oh, kind of like Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's right. Well, I guess there's only thing, one thing left to do. Yeah, and that's Try the piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. 
cake egg roll. Here we go. Wow. Chef Hawk, you have done Baltimore proud. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>